beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed of prayer when it is done with understanding and done with all your heart are we together prayer enforces realities but then prayer without knowledge is just a religious burden the power of prayer is the light upon which the prayer comes from you don't just pray just by shouting or rolling no it must be from the strength of knowledge prayer is only powerful when it stems from a paradigm that is consistent with the word of God so that we do not pray amiss and waste our time shadow boxing. Praise the Lord. Now, when you look around the nation, our nation here in Nigeria, there seems to be all kinds of sad stories. Please pay attention from the recession officially declared that the nation is in a state of recession which is not a good testimony for any nation because that means that there will be an increase in the rate of crime there will be an increase in the rate of perversion are we together um, standards will be compromised values will be compromised and all kinds of wrong things will be allowed to find expression um fear looms the heart of people everywhere there's all kinds of confusion people who have labored for years working in different corporations now being downsized because the various parastatals and companies can no longer take you know people and so they have to downsize people there are companies that are downsizing people in the thousands i mean you just get up and come to work in the morning and see a notice board with your name and if you're not fortunate you and your wife and maybe any other person you know yeah, so it's we must we must sincerely um reckon with the fact that it, it's generally speaking it seems to be a very difficult time for people not just financially but the trauma of living in an environment where um you humanly speaking do not know what will happen next are we together now you don't know what will happen next parents are confused obviously a major part of our leaders are confused their policies are clearly a product of trial and error and um, corporations are confused families are confused that their children being taken out of school because the parents cannot afford it I think it's more serious than most people think it is uh, especially because many of us here are young people and a number of us are in some way still dependent on some form of support directly or indirectly chances are that we will trivialize the gravity of what is happening around the nation because 
somehow we just know that someone somewhere is responsible for our needs but I, I want to really wake us up tonight and share with us a few keys the ember months generally in this nation I don't know for what reason has been characterized by a lot of um, phobia there's such a phobia for the ember months because most people over time have seen that it comes with certain not too pleasant experiences but then one of the things that we have been taught in this place and I've held as a personal conviction is that there is a mystery of exemption everybody say there is a mystery of exemption but exemption is not a product of desire exemption like many other realities in the kingdom depends on access to knowledge access to the keys that control those results desire is good is a starting point of anything but it's not enough desire in itself cannot produce any result there are many well-meaning people who um desire certain things in their lives there are people who desire the anointing there are sincere pastors who want more of god's glory upon their lives their congregations there are ministries that sincerely desire growth and increase and expansion and results there are jobless people who sincerely desire jobs there are those working who sincerely desire promotion there are barren women who desire children are we together there are all kinds our society is full of genuine desires but you see desires by themselves do not produce results are we together much more than desires we must have access to the truths that will deliver our expectations to us and so if we must make maximal use of the remaining months of this year and this period of our lives it is important for us to again and again number one probe the foundation of our convictions probe the informations that you hold as true the bible reveals to us that there is a possibility that what a man calls light can be darkness he says be careful lest your light be darkness so i can hold on to a truth that may be based on my perception look like light but based on God's reference point may be darkness are we together so the Bible teaches that we receive with meekness meekness requires that you bring yourself to the position of a learner not necessarily an ignorant person but one who realizes that there are more possibilities than he or she has experienced so far it's a very powerful state in the spirit it's one of the states that attracts the presence of the holy spirit to the life of a man the moment you come to an acknowledgement that there can be more than you have known and that the limit of your experience is not the limit in god you immediately attracts the presence of the holy spirit there are a kind of people and there is a kind of spiritual posture that will attract the holy spirit to come and do business with you and one of such is a heart of meekness we live in a society where there are many people who and um, many of us are what we call elites we we come from uh, a very strong intellectual background we've gone to school we're intelligent we have all kinds of accolades in honor of our intellectual investments but let me tell you something about god when in god's dealings with man regardless of what you have acquired intellectually which is very useful when you come before him you must realize that in the kingdom there's no such thing as a learned person you are either learning or you are in ignorance the concept of being learned with God does not exist. Are we together? So you'd never put a full stop to your pursuit with God. There is always a new dimension. There is always a new possibility outside of the scope, our current scope of understanding. And the moment we just bring that position spiritually and we say we are learned, I know this, I know that, I know this, 
The Bible says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Only those who communicate their hunger and thirst will be filled. If I'm not thirsty and you bring me water, I may not appreciate the value of that water. And then more so, if you force me to take the water, that which is supposed to be an act of kindness will now offend me. Are we together? That's why most times God will not by himself get up and initiate change in people. He will allow them. You see, let me tell you the way heaven works. Heaven does not act. Heaven reacts. Everybody say heaven reacts. There must be an action from the earth as a communication of desperation, a communication of passion, a communication of need and desire. So when a man cries unto God, Lord, have mercy on me, thou son of David. Jesus saw him, right? At the border of Jericho, he saw that man seated there. Only God knows how long he had been there. But it was costly for Jesus to assume the man needed help. And so he kept passing. And the man shouted the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The woman with the issue of blood, when she came, the Bible says she said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, the centurion left his house and came where Jesus was, pleading for him to do a miracle. So every time you need God's attention, you attract it by hunger, desire, and a desperate, repeated communication of that. You don't just sit down and wish and say, God knows my heart. No, God needs an expression. Those who really keep growing in the spirit are those who have made it a culture to never be satisfied with where they are to never be satisfied with what they've seen i've experienced the anointing but lord i know there can be more i've experienced prosperity but i know there can be more i've experienced wisdom i've had encounters i've had visions i've had the the operation of the prophetic the miraculous but i know that there is always more in god so never put a full stop to your work with god don't even allow the current results in your life because of how frequent the results are they can build a fortification around your life that stops you reduces your impetus to pursue god and seek him more hallelujah you know the the greatest limitation to progressive success is the last one you've had failure does not make people backslide failure spurs people to do more but when you start having results chances are that on the strength of obvious results that you're having there might not be any desire to seek him again after all I, I may not be in a very high level of the healing anointing but at least there is something here and there there are miracles after all I may not have very deep access to revelation but at least I have a few things to share that attitude in the Bible is called complacency complacency when you build inertia to your pursuit so that it now impedes your desire to move forward the, your passion must be fresh it must be consistent and you, you, you should never tone down your desire for God hallelujah so this is very important what I'll be sharing with us tonight um I have come to a realization that any responsible man of God, any responsible ministry, any responsible structure, any responsible leadership, among other things, must develop an attitude to respond to the needs of the people. Are we together? When you build people, if God brings us together in a ministry like this, our growth must be intentional, our growth must be specific. And then our growth must be, it must be consistent. And it is the assignment of every pastor, every man of God, every spiritual leader to stay with God and not just stay with God alone, to sit through the agency of the spirit of wisdom and design a system of teaching people such that their growth becomes holistic. Are we together? Please, if God is calling you into ministry here or you are a pastor, 
you must understand that you cannot guess the way to build people there is a system of growth the same way a student goes to school and um, the, 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 the faculty or the department designs a system. We call it a program. That program is supposed to make the student come out with a certain understanding. The program is intentional. Now here and there you could alter the programs with a few things or upgrade and add a few things. But there is a structure. You build people not through guesswork. You build people through structure. You see, this that we are doing now, we are not doing anything new necessarily. There is a spiritual system that has been created that makes people powerful, that makes people rise to a point of kingdom influence. So what we are doing is we are aligning to and with the ways of God to guide and help every one of us to rise. Say amen. So every pastor must have a system if God has declared that this for instance is a year of multiplied grace and influence then it should speak in the kind of messages that are communicated because people rise up by revelation are we together so you must be able to communicate the truths that build people along the line of prophecy and then you must communicate the truths it is up to the man of God to stay with the Holy Spirit and monitor the spiritual growth of a people and bring relevant teachings that number one are life applicable no matter how deep your teachings are if they do not translate to life applicable principles that people can use to produce results in their lives every day then you are wasting their time are we together if the truths that you learn here cannot be used in your business cannot be used in your workplace cannot be used in school cannot be used in your place of influence wherever your sphere of influence and cannot be used in your own personal work with God the moment there is please someone respond to that baby can we have someone please hallelujah praise the Lord the moment there is a system or there is no system to communicate knowledge to you in such a way and a manner that your growth becomes holistic you know one of the saddest things and and, and i say this with a very heavy heart with um many churches and many ministries in nigeria is that the men of god do not build the people intentionally to prevail they don't build them intentionally to be agents of transformation. They do not build them to be men of power. So we have people of prayer who cannot do well. We have people of prosperity who are bankrupt spiritually. So every man of God must bring teachings that are not only life applicable, but must make sure that the teachings are actually building people. I personally believe that I will never be part of a church or a ministry where I sit under that anointing, that man of God, that influence for a, 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 an appreciable period of time and I cannot trace exactly the things that are happening in my life. I think it's an utter waste of time. Praise the Lord. So I want you to respect and value the teachings that come here. By the grace of God, we are not just spiritual people, we are intelligent people. We have stayed by the spirit of God to, uh, to find out the systems of the kingdom and the things that make things work and some of the things that I share with you are principles that I live by not principles I practice principles I live by and they are principles that have been responsible for undeniable results in the lives of people organizations territories and so on and so forth so these ideas are not a guesswork they are not they are not cunningly devised fables as the apostle will say they are tailor-made to build you it's up to you to submit yourself to those teachings and practice them appropriately and then you will see your life rise may your life rise in jesus name may your life rise in jesus name May you be so powerful that as a person you are equivalent to a nation in the name of Jesus Christ. So I have a few things that I want to share with us tonight that in my opinion are the keys 
that can help any man survive the storms and the vicissitudes that these seasons have brought upon us there are principles that when we learn we will be able to regardless of the storms um, we will ride above it and thereby demonstrating the fact that the kingdom of God is a more superior kingdom to any democracy to any kind of system we are demonstrators of the reality the Bible says that we have been called to show forth to show forth right is the Greek word is 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 the, is the, is the word doxazo not just is an a manifestation of the glory a showing forth like like um someone will bring people and show the products a display so when men say there is a casting down and you sustain the keys to say there is a lifting up you will compel men and they will want to come and find out what principles do you use there is no one on earth who wants to remain with an understanding that is not producing results even if do, they do not know that they need change everybody wants change that's why we go to herbalist that's why we change soap we change houses we change institutions nobody wants to camp around anything that does not produce and let me tell you something the options that are in the world now have reduced the patience of people so the moment there is no result people don't give you a second chance they move immediately if you have a product for instance generally speaking and someone patronizes you and your product cannot deliver to expectation that's all it will take a long time before they return to you are we together so it is with ministry so it is with a lot of spiritual things i i can literally sense the frustration in the hearts of many pastors many members they are asking questions that for many people no one is asking is answering will we continue like this if there is a god in heaven why are we this way spiritually financially and otherwise hallelujah Matthew 13 verse 11 popular scripture let's start from there tonight Jesus was teaching and then he said he made a very interesting statement Matthew 13 verse 11 it's projected please let's read together one to read Now, let me, just, let me just guide us a little to understand really what the kingdom of heaven is. When the Bible talks of the kingdom, most times you find out, especially in the New Testament, that there is an interplay of um, the phrase or the clause, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. They are not the same. They are not the same. The kingdom of God represents any sphere, any territory, where the sovereign power and the sovereign control of God can find expression. Take note of my choice of words. Any sphere, any atmosphere where the sovereignty of God can find expression is called the kingdom of God. So the lake of fire is part of the kingdom of God because he designed it, he created it, he still has control over it. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. The earth is is his footstool and every other place the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence so everywhere the influence of god can be extended to everything that was created by him constitutes his kingdom are we together so when you are talking of the kingdom of god you are referring to every sphere of influence practically speaking everywhere is the kingdom of god everywhere but when you talk of the kingdom of heaven, now listen, when Jesus was teaching, right, in what we call the Beatitudes, um, when he got to Matthew 5, 6, he began to teach them and he says, thy kingdom come. Then he says, thy will be done in earth as it is in the heavens. Are we together? So the kingdom of heaven represents any sphere and any territory where the sovereign control of God has been permitted to find expression. 
Now, not a sphere where God's sovereignty can find expression. A sphere where the sovereignty can or has experientially been allowed to find expression. And that happens when his will is being done. Are we together? So the whole earth belongs to God, but there are still witchcraft covens. Are we together? There are still lives everybody was created by God but not everybody belongs to him are we together so the influence of the kingdom of God is everywhere with every witch with every wizard but only those who belong to him they have come into the experience of the kingdom of heaven they have allowed their lives to be an expression of the will of God the kingdom of heaven only finds expression in any territory and any life where the will of God experientially is being done. Are we clear about that now? So that we do not just confuse the words. I just felt like putting them in so that we can have it in perspective. The kingdom of God, his sovereign sphere, he fills all things and in all. The kingdom of heaven, every territory, every space where he has been allowed to find expression. A very clear example of this is the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Right? You can call it the Kingdom of Nigeria everywhere. But not every part of the Kingdom of Nigeria is directly as we know experientially under the control of the federal government. Is that true? We have a forest like Sambisa that is being contended with. There are certain people within that territory who are refusing the sovereignty of the nation. We have other aspects here and there. We have um, several pockets of places who have refused to subscribe to the laws of the land. Now those areas, those territories are rebel territories and the assignment of the government is to insist through the agency of the military until every territory within that sphere comes under the reign and the rule of the federal government. That is the true concept of sovereignty. Are we together? So God's desire is not just for the kingdom of God to be known and understood, but that the kingdom of heaven, what we call heaven, right, will find expression in every life and across every territory. When that happens, there will be no more poverty. When that happens, there will be no more oppression. When that happens, there will be no more death. When that happens, there will be no more sickness. When that happens, there will be no more hostility, hatred, and all of these things. And then heaven, the heaven of heavens, as revealed from scripture, is a prototype of that possibility. So we see heaven as the end of what earth should be like. Are we together? It has already happened in heaven. So there's no point asking, can it happen? A sample of it is already in existence now. A sphere where there is absolute love, absolute joy, no lack, abundance, peace, and so on and so forth. So our assignment is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to keep bringing pieces and portions and dimensions of that reality to our lives and our environment. And the more they successfully arrive here, everything about our lives begin to be a reflection of that reality there. The dimension we choose to embrace is the dimension we will see. Are we together? So when the Bible says all things are possible, he speaks from the perspective of the heavens. It is up to the saints here on the earth to find out the keys that can make those all things possible. But simply because of our passion and our rate of search is so slow, our lifetime becomes too short for us to reveal all the possibilities. So we die only experiencing some. But God's desire is not for us to experience some. His desire is for the fullness. The fullness of all that heaven is. is to find expression. To a point that God will have to help us by himself. And take the old earth and the whole heaven away. And bring in another one. Are we together? But as many as received him. Even to them that believed on his name, he gave them power.
power to become power to become power to become become what the experience not just the sons of god i told you that the word son of god is not just one begotten by a man the word son of god is an office in heaven it didn't start with the new testament son of god is an office in heaven that's why women can also be called sons of god ladies can also be called sons of god old people can also be called sons of god it's not about gender it's not the way we perceive sonship like you know you give birth to something because we were not jesus christ was begotten but we were adopted right by the spirit of adoption So let's look at a few things. A few keys that will help us. I have been intrigued. I still am by the fact that life can be absolutely predictable to those who have the keys and have an understanding of the ways of God. I will keep drumming this until it enters our spirit and becomes our template in life. That when you allow your life to chance, listen please, when you allow your life to guesswork, when you allow your life to emotional suggestions, you're going to live a life of failure. You will be a victim of too many situations and circumstances. And there are so many people who are victims of, they try anything. Whenever they have challenges or as they live their lives, they guess per day. What do I do today? What do I think is the smartest decision to make? And most of the informations that guide our decisions are wrong. Are wrong. They were fabricated by people who do not know God or people who do not understand and honor his ways. So most of the decisions we make in our lives are primarily wrong because most of our decisions are inherited transferred from father to mother transferred from one intelligent man to another or transferred from one confused but arrogant person or system to the other there are few people who have come to a point of humility to truly understand and acknowledge that we do not know so much it is my I, I pray every time and I tell God bring me to a point in my life where I never get too confident of myself a point where I know that if the Holy Spirit and his word does not guide me, I don't trust my decisions. Hallelujah. You want a life of transgenerational relevance? You desire a life that transcends the limitations that come with society? A life that is recession proof? A life that is above the vicissitudes of life. A life that is above frustration. A life that is above regrets. A life that is above pain. A life of meaning and a life of relevance. Do the following. Number one. Whoever desires such a life, any church that desires such an experience, any organization that desires such a reality, the first requirement is that you must have a genuine encounter with Jesus. Don't trivialize what I'm saying. Write it and please listen. A genuine encounter with Jesus. Not just an encounter with the Holy Spirit. A genuine encounter with Jesus. I have come to discover that there are many people in church, there are many professing Christians who have not had a genuine encounter with Jesus. You can know all the church words. You can know all the, the cliches, the Christian talk. You can be an elder in church. You can be a pastor. But the question is, have you had a genuine encounter with Jesus? An encounter with Jesus is not just coming out for an altar call. You can act drama. People act drama where they get born again and go back and genuinely they are sinners. People act drama as pastors who lead people. They even pray in tongues in the drama, but they are not born again. An encounter with Jesus. That's why the salvation of many people looks like it's fake. Because it's not born from a genuine encounter. Let me show you a scripture. Um, Luke 24, please. Media help us. Luke 24. 
we look at verse 28 down to 34. I may not read every part of it, but let's see how far God will help us. Thank you. Luke 24. This was the experience of Jesus with the two men um, on their way to a city called Emmaus. The Bible says, And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Let's read on. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went to tarry with them. This is Jesus now. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. Listen. It says he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave them. 31. And their eyes were open. And they what? Until your eyes is open, you cannot know him. Listen. Stop there, please. It says, and their eyes were open and they knew him. That's not that they recognized him alone. They had an encounter with him. And they testified. They said something. 32. Let's read on please. And they said to one another. Read on. Did not our hearts burn within us? While he talked with us. By the way. And while he opened us up to the scripture. An encounter with Jesus. Jesus. That something will burn upon your spirit. As the word of God is coming. Something burns upon your heart. I'm telling you many believers do not have this experience. At all. At all. That's, that shows in how much we respect him. That shows in how much we value spiritual things. We sit down under different kinds of men of God. We sit down under different kinds of anointings. Different kinds of teachings. But we do not desire genuine encounters. Did not our hearts burn conviction? Did not our hearts burn conviction? Conviction. Conviction. When Peter spoke, right? Uh, the encounter of Pentecost the Bible says they, are, they were pricked to the heart that's why you can have people sit down in church like this and a man of God is preaching, others are crying and you see them look and immediately after the message they get up with their conscience seared the Bible says with hot iron no conviction no willingness for transformation Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Don't just desire to recite salvation prayer. Desire a genuine encounter that will show. Let me tell you, it is impossible to have an encounter with Jesus and remain the same. No. It has nothing to do with whether your faith is working or not. It must work, I guarantee you. When Jesus met the woman at the Samaritan woman, remember the story? The Samaritan woman at the well. This was a woman who had been married to over six men, you know, five men, and the sixth person she was with was not even her husband. Terrible situation. And Jesus by the well, he began to engage her in a conversation. At the end of it, do you know what the Bible says? A solid encounter. She left, in other words, her encounter with Jesus made what she was doing before his arrival trivial. Let me tell you, one of the indices of an encounter is a re-evaluation re of your life. If your priorities do not change, you've not met Jesus. No way. You can't tell me your value system, your way of life, your desire, your passion, your aspiration before and after you met him is still the same. No, sir. When you meet Jesus, you will shift for sure. Are we together? Many people's lives do not change. No conviction. Their, their, their priorities are not altered at all. You were an unserious person before you met God. Now that you claim you meet him, you are still unserious. Unserious with the things of God. Unserious with the house of God. No, you've not had an encounter. Uh, you know why I'm telling us this? If people deceive you, you can grow past their deception. But when you deceive yourself, it is true deception. You're my treasure, my priority. 
who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything everything lord you
it, it honestly is better if I see somebody and you are a chronic sinner, you are a chronic drunkard, it's faster for you to be born again. That's why God chose Saul. When he saw Saul and saw his zeal, if he was determined to make sure someone died, nothing would change him, not even the rain. He would get up and do it. It's called zeal. Question. All of us here and those following me online, I don't care whether you think you are born again or not. Do you have zeal for God? Don't say yes. Your life should show it. Do you have zeal for the things of God? If no, when will you have it? The day you die? The day the devil finishes with you? The day you lose the job? The day you cannot lift one hand again? The day you wrongly mentor a generation? The day life whips you and you no longer have options? They that seek him early, find him. There is a time. There is a time to seek God. Let me tell you, you don't seek God anytime you want. There is a time you seek God. Say, Lord, give me zeal for you. Say it, Lord, give me zeal for you. Not zeal for preaching. Uh -uh. Not zeal for ministry. Not zeal for programs. Zeal for God. I can look at your life and know the extent of your zeal for God. I look at the books in your life and I know your zeal for God. I see your commitment in the house of God and I know your zeal for God. I see your passion to see others saved and I know your zeal for God. Now that's a big one because many believers, the concept of soul winning has dried in our lives completely. Read your Bible. Everybody who encountered God by themselves, they were too grateful to keep quiet. The madman in Gadara, the moment he had that encounter, the Bible says he ran to the Decapolis, 10 cities, and brought people to Jesus. The Samaritan woman, she left her water there and ran to the city. Come, see a man who has told me everything about my life. And the Bible says when the men met Jesus, they say we believe now, not because you brought us. We have seen for ourselves. Saul of Tarsus, when he encountered Jesus Christ, in life and in death, I want to ask you a very serious question. And God is asking you this question. Whose life today has been changed because of your being born again? It's an index to measure your zeal. Can you turn and say somebody's life, Elijah, come, come. Elijah has come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This guy was a drunkard, but hallelujah, he's changed today because of my life. I was an instrument. My zeal for God was so powerful that he was able to give up everything. Let me tell you, when you are around people and they don't see a need to exalt God more than what they are currently doing, your light is not shining. That someone talks with you and goes back home, he can't read again. He can't eat again. You, you, it's like an infection. The person sits down. He would try to pretend as if what you said didn't enter him, but you've transferred something. And in the night, he's rolling from left to right of the bed and he gets up and kneels down and says, Lord, please, I can't, I can't fight this war forever. You see, when when bringing many people to the saving knowledge of Jesus and seeing their life transformed is not your passion you will never carry the anointing if you like fast for 100 days is the Lord speaking to us tonight I'm speaking to every one of you if Jesus Christ appears right now in Koinonia and says everybody walk through this crowd and hold the hands of someone whose life has been changed because of your existence. How many of us will have someone in our hand? Many of us will walk everywhere. And the person will say, no, no, no. I was changed. You saw me in my situation and you left me. It was someone else that came to change me. 
I was your neighbor for three years. You saw me and you left me. By the mercy of God, someone else. God used someone else. I want you in your mind. Hold the hands of someone whose life is a testament of your zeal for God. And then you will see why many people's prayers are not answered. You will see why many people's passion for anointing and power and crowd. Are we together? Whose life? Who God filled with the Holy Spirit because you are passionate about God? Who stopped smoking and drinking because you came to know the Lord? Whose life, whose confused destiny was brought back in order because of your zeal? Please hear me. If you are here and you are not doing anything for the kingdom, I want you to know that God is not happy with you. Don't allow anybody to deceive you and say you are alright. You are not alright. There is a serious problem. You may not be going to hell, but there is no zeal in your heart. Those whose impact will be transgenerational are those who God is more than church to them. God is more than koinonia to them. God is more than ministry. There are many pastors who don't have zeal for God. They are only preaching because they were transferred to that branch. And I mean, on Sunday you must preach. On Friday you must speak. You must come for koinonia. You must speak to people. There is a routine that you organize 21 days fasting. So you are part of it. You are in the worship team and you must do the rehearsals. If you don't come, what do you tell your head of department? So I am there. Are we together? You are a worker in the house of God just because they know you. I'm holding the camera just because I have to do it. No, let me tell you. Zeal creates passion in you that you even have to pray and say, ah, let them not say I'm overdoing this. Passion. You are in the worship team every time you are going for rehearsal. There is joy in your heart. You are not dragging yourself and saying today again. No, your zeal has died since. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. You were so zealous they used to call you pastor. Now they call you bros. Do you know why? Something happened. Your, your backsliding left you and it became so obvious that the people now felt they are even insulting you, calling you. There was a name they called you which was a testament of your zeal. Now everything they are doing, you are doing too. So they don't see the difference again. So they can as well just call you bros. When they wanted to gossip and you entered, not because you were judging anybody, there was, your passion for God was so contagious. But now as soon as they are saying, once you enter, they say, sit down, thank God, this guy has completed the equation. He will bring another side of the story. Look, let me tell you something. Eh? If you want to be serious with God, just set your face like a flint and go for it. If you want to play games with God, then at least be bad and go to hell. Let it be that you were not serious and you went to hell, but that you are one leg in, one leg out, acting as though you love God, acting as though you are not serious, there are many ladies who are not serious with God. Many sisters are not serious with God. They are serious with marriage. They are serious with relationship. Huh? They are serious with beauty. Nothing is wrong with all those things. But God. There are many parents. In fact, parents own. I say it with, with due respect. Many of our parents are not serious with God. Especially the fathers. The mothers are serious with God. Pain has brought them to God. But many fathers are dead spiritually. And the family is suffering because of their lack of zeal. You pray, they get up and say, keep quiet. 
Why are you disturbing us? I have headache, please. Whereas that's the solution to the headache. They stop you. Are we together? Ah. How many parents encourage young people who are serious with God? Stop all this your gym gym thing. We started before you were born. But then they have another younger brother who jumps the fence. And they say, talk, God is helping us. At least he's going to school. You see, you see our rating? See our rating? Zeal for God. How many homes as a home are passionate about God? How many families have contributed to the advancement of the kingdom? When was the last time many families came together to pray? I, I know when the last time was when there was trouble. Severe trouble that could threaten the father. Then we would do fire brigade disturbances. And when there is peace, we now say everybody should go. Devotionals. Morning devotion in many families have died completely. Completely. Everybody now does his own. You get up. If you're a Pentecostal, you go outside. You go and shout near the fence. If you are, if you are, you are, you are an orthodox or whatever you are, you just open whatever book you read and sleep while you are reading it and mock yourself. No zeal. Are we together? We do everything we want to do with our time and our life. Then the balance of it is what we give God. Say, God, you better be grateful. I'm giving you this. I mean, I'm, I'm getting busier by the day. Anything that will take God's place in my life, I don't care whether it is fame, whether it is money. May it not just come to me. May, may it be far from me in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to check your life because you see love hear me love is like energy it can never be created nor destroyed if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere for sure if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere I used to love him now I don't love him that space cannot be empty so the question is what occupied it I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord I will bow Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you Listen, I'm speaking specifically right now by the Spirit to those who were serious with God before. If nobody has told you it's a problem, backsliding is a very bad thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a terrible thing to at one time in your life be serious. Where did you leave the prayers? The nights when you called upon His name. Where did you keep the fasting? Who preached you into thinking it was not important? What relationship make God look like nonsense in your life? Who asked you out and asked God out of your life? What job came into your life and removed everything God out of your life? Take what I'm saying seriously. Where did you keep the visions you used to see? You solved the problems in people's lives because of how serious and fiery your spirit was. But right now, everything passes and there is no eye to see again. And you keep moving around. There are many pastors who need to go back for a retreat. They are still standing, moving around as usual. But we know the wine has finished. There's nothing there again. The zeal of the Lord. To the point that many of us are even ashamed now. Huh? You are ashamed now. The only place you are confident about God is koinonia. How after that you are ashamed because God has looked like nonsense to you. Anti-technology, anti-civilization, anti-socialization. That's your understanding of who God is. Did our hearts not burn within us as he opened the scripture? Hallelujah. Many fathers have left God since Sins looking 
searching for money left God sins do you know the number of Christians that patronize herbalists you think if the herbalists were not patronized they wouldn't go and look for something else they are in business alive and strong patronized by Christians look let me tell you you know what I'm saying is not a lie you know what I'm saying is not a lie look we must get back to that place where God is all and in all where God is not just the most important thing there are four keys I'm giving you tonight this is just number one but I must burn it in there are backsliders that need to run to God it's not an insult it's not an insult don't allow people keep telling you you are okay you know when you are not okay you know when you are not okay everything is going haywire in your life it's a message it's a message don't wait till you are destroyed your joy has left you your peace has left you impact has left you passion has left you the gifts have dried from your life how can you say nothing is wrong how can you fool yourself into thinking nothing is wrong let me take an altar call I'm going to take an altar call two fiery altar calls one you need Jesus I'm not giving you any long story you've had everything I've said you desperately need Jesus two you need genuine restoration you're saying please don't pretend it and, and I'm, I, I don't mean that you just need to step up you were one serious with God for whatever reason sincerely you know between you and God you need a personal revival to come back please I will count one to five nobody's closing their eyes wherever you are inside or outside I want you to stand up and come to the front right now one run like there's fire on the mountain I need revival I can't tell a lie Lord something is wrong with my life I will lay down my idols those of you who are sitting be praying don't be watching who is coming it's none of your business some of you sitting are supposed to be outside so don't sit down watching who is coming and who is not coming I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. Please pray all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Sing it with me. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Yeah. All about you, all about you, all about you, all about you, Jesus. All about you, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. All of you who are out, I like you to cry. Renew my passion, oh God. I don't know where it went to, but it must return this night. Renew my passion. Renew my fire. Lord, you are more precious 
than silver Lord you are more costly than gold Lord you are more beautiful than diamond there is nothing I desire compared to you more precious than silver Lord you are more costly than gold Nothing I desire compared to you. Lord, there is nothing I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one. I desire Make sure you are praying There is no place I desire There is no place I desire Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. Please pray in one minute, all of you in front. Lord, affect my life. Change me. Take away that heart of stone. Replace it with a heart of flesh. Lord, let me stop playing games with you. I mean business. I want to live a life of impact. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is my life. I want to live. I want to live. Serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I bring it back to the altar. Take it, oh God. Here is my life. I bring my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my time. Here is my time. I give you my time. Hallelujah. All of you who are out, I want to pray for you. You have my life. You have my life. You have my life. Hey. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. 
in the name of Jesus all of you who are standing outside here whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you are rededicating your life I'd like you to say it passionately as though you are talking to a real person standing close to you say Lord Jesus restore my zeal restore my fire restore my passion I declare this night take your place take your place in my life I mean business with you from today everything that has taken your place in my life regardless of what it is I pray that you rise above it my heart belongs to you my mind belongs to you my body belongs to you take it use it for your glory from today every lifestyle every association that does not please you I part ways with them forever in the name of Jesus I honor you for this decision God bless you please rise up and go back to your seat very quickly celebrate them and thank the Lord thank you hallelujah hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns hallelujah sit down sit down sit down let's continue so that's the first key to a life of transgenerational relevance to a life that will make God vow to defend you a life of passion a life of zeal a life that has truly met God number two the second key you need to rise above the tides and the vicissitudes of life is mental transformation. The second key you need, the power of a renewed mind. Someone is under the anointing, you can just carry them to the back. Paradigm shifts, change of mindsets, ideologies altered shifted for good there is so much that God wants to do in and through our lives but our paradigms listen to me please our mindsets our ideologies limit him again and again most believers are taught as powerful as this altar call was it is not all there is to your salvation. There are different dimensions and facets of our salvation. And the consummation of your salvation is the renewal of your mind. 
First Peter chapter 1 verse 9, please. If we can have it in the amplified version, please hurry up. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. Shabakato Sapratakata. First Peter chapter 1. Sibraske Brandada Balada Badaba. Mambro Sketa Rato Shela Pariata. Oh come, oh come, me man well and run some cap TV Can you help us, media? Oh come, oh come, me man well and run some cap TV I like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read. Uh huh. You receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It says, receiving the end of your faith, King James says, even the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul is the renewal of your mind. When your mind has experientially been brought under the lordship of both the person and the philosophies of Jesus is the culmination of your salvation at that point you experientially begin to walk in the benefits and the blessings of salvation because the bible tells us that salvation is a well there are wells not just a well it said for with joy shall you draw out of the wells the wells the wells divine health a life of impact a life of prosperity all in that word soteria it's an all encompassing word it's not just translation from darkness to light the experience of the fullness of the life of God in all its dimensions and the bible says for that to happen the consummation of it is the salvation of your soul the renewal of your mind paradigms and I, I was teaching, I think it was yesterday in the school of ministry, and I was teaching the students, and I taught them that we are programmed in two ways. The first programming is called genetic programming. Genetic programming comes from father to son, in sin did my mother bear me, and so on and so forth. So we, we receive traits spiritually by inheritance, but the second and more dangerous of the programming is environment. It's called environmental programming. Say environmental programming. We grew up in different regions of the world, different regions of Nigeria, under different kinds of parenting, under different kinds of exposure, with different kinds of experiences. Are we together? And so our concepts, our perspectives, our ideologies about God ideologies about marriage ideologies about education ideologies about greatness ideologies about a good life ideologies about you name it diverse ideologies influenced by our environment culture our levels of exposure our failures of the past have all environmentally programmed us now, when you come to God, watch this. When you, got, when you got born again, your mind did not change all of a sudden. Are we together? There needs to be a system of progressive transformation which is dependent on the allowance that you give the Holy Spirit through the world. It's not by force. You can choose to stop and say, Lord, I peg myself at this level. Thank you for all you've done for me. But I cannot continue with you. You are not going to hell. But you sure will not do much for the kingdom. And the quality of your life will be greatly affected. Are we together? There are two dimensions to our work with God. There is an encounter with his presence and his person. That's the first dimension to our work with God. An encounter with his presence and his person. The fruit of that dimension is um, conformity to the image of the Christ. So when you have an encounter with the person of Christ, you have an encounter with the presence of Christ, you are conformed to the image 
of Christ and you rise in character the fruit of the spirit is at work in you your character becomes Christ like that's the benefit of an encounter with the person but an encounter with the person Christ will not automatically change your destiny and the quality of your life you must encounter the principles of Christ you must encounter the mysteries of the kingdom you must encounter the ideologies and the philosophies of Christ it's not enough to have an encounter with the person Christ you must encounter his ideologies his philosophies his thinking his paradigm you must be willing to exalt the word of God above culture above your ideologies above your experience at that point the principles of the kingdom you have now embraced and are practicing will begin to bring new results in your life everybody say new results yeah you are not going to get a new result as far as the quality of your life is concerned with an old ideology the bible puts it beautifully it says no man puts new wine correct in an old wine skin no you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin new wine must be put in a new wine skin so your own assignment is to present a new wine skin and God's assignment is to pour the new wine let me tell you how God makes the old wine obsolete he pours small new wine in the old wine because the Bible says when new wine is poured in an old wine skin it will tear it so God introduces something new to your old mindset and it rattles your philosophy making your beliefs obsolete and you want something new and that's where true transformation begins say change my mind oh God say change my mindset I don't want to begin to tell you how limited our lives can be when we do not sustain a paradigm that is consistent with the word of God and by word of God I mean God's ways of doing things the principles of the kingdom not just scriptures your mindset must come in perfect alignment to God's idea I'll give you an instance as bad and sad as the economy is and I sympathized, you know, um, I was sympathetic to it. We are responsible people. So we don't ignore uh, the reality of what is happening in our society. How be it? In God's system, there is a provision. Say there is a provision. There is a provision for a possibility to experience abundance, even in the midst of famine. Now, it's up to you to work with the mindset that has been proposed as far as school economic theories government policies are concerned or you can switch and choose to adopt the ideology of the kingdom and then you will see the results divine health there is no such thing as divine health in the physical world divine health is only in Christ there is no such thing as that you are expected to be sick once and again all the time every time without exception are we together now, when you begin to adopt the mind of Christ, you now find out that there is a possibility in Christ and there is a provision where a man can rise and that your body can be immune to communicable diseases and all kinds of things that destroy people. A possibility based on another ideology. Where you are today is a reflection of how much space you have given God in your mind. I've taught us here again and I'll repeat it that mindsets are doorways. Mindsets are not like doorways. They are literally doorways. They authorize the entrance of demon spirits to your life and they authorize the entrance of the Holy Spirit to your life. The devil can have limited or almost no access to you if your mindset does not allow him. Even witchcraft, curses and all of these things that have plagued the lives of men these causes have gotten unlimited access through certain mental constructions like fear, the planting of fear, bad ideas that ignites the law of expectation. Are we together? The greater part of deliverance is not casting out the devil that is responsible for that operation. The greater part of, of deliverance is the transformation of your mindset. So your mindset changes so that it does not authorize that operation to find expression again. Because when a spirit leaves, the Bible says it will still come back and check 
he still calls that place my house are we together the transformation of our minds in Psalm 78 verse 41 popular scripture here the Bible says they limited the Holy One they limited the Holy One it was the encounter of those in the nation of, uh, of the, um, the Israelites their sojourn out of Egypt right and the psalmist by the spirit was given a few details there and he said they limited the Holy One they limited the Holy One Psalm 78 verse 41 they limited the Holy One right they said can God make a wilderness how many times have we limited God with our mindsets and our understandings Proverbs 23 verse 7 Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 He leads me and guides me to the city of above He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny He leads me and guides me to the city of above He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny Please sit down. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were still standing. Let's read the A part. Just the A part. One to read. For as he thinketh in his heart, so, this is scripture. The word heart in many translations is interchange heart, mind. For as he thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will be. So he already is. As he thinketh in his heart, your reality a messless expression of your ideology. Listen, let me tell you an uncomfortable truth. The quality of your life right now in all its ramifications with no exception, the quality of your life and my life right now is a messless reflection of our ideologies. What we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize. This is an uncomfortable truth. It will take a lot of meekness to admit this what we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize. Meaning if we can understand more and we can authorize more of the possibilities of God to find expression, we will rise from where we are to another dimension and another quality of life. Say amen. Koinonia is where it is right now because of the limitation of our mindset. Are we together? Where God has brought us now by grace is dependent on our mindset and our understanding and where we need to rise to we have not risen there already because something about our paradigm is limiting us it could be a paradigm in leadership it could be a paradigm in in organization it could be a paradigm in the anointing it could be an understanding there is something as a person and as a ministry we have not yet gotten to that holds the key to our next dimension if we do not get it we remain here forever if we get it, then we rise. Right? Paul the apostle said, I went up by revelation. You don't go up by desire. I went up by revelation. What have you seen? What do you know? What has changed about your perspective that has improved the quality of your life? There are many well-meaning but nonsense ideologies we carry around. One of the ideologies is the concept of the sovereign will of God. We just believe that everything that happens in our life is the sovereign will of God. A very stupid mindset that has been responsible for the pain of many people. So we sit down and we are irresponsible as far as our participation in the outcome of the events of our lives are and we justify ourselves and say God planned it that's why I'm poor God planned it that's why I'm not happy no sir the will of God is very clear in his word I know the thoughts that I think towards you Jeremiah 29 11 saith the Lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end God can take advantage of a situation and turn it for good for we know that all things although not created that way but they can work together for good. It's a system in God's mercy that makes everything to eventually work for good. But that doesn't mean it cost it. 
Are we together? The simple paradigm, this change of mindset that my success and your success does not entirely rest on God and not entirely on me. That there is a partnership. Can I use you again? Please. There is a partnership between God and Joshua Selman for the outcome of his life. If Koinonia must rise, it's not just God alone. It's not just Joshua Selman alone. There must be a partnership. There is a role that is exclusive to the office of God. I cannot do it, but there is a part God will not do for me. If you must succeed in your life, in your marriage, there is a role. As a sister, a husband will not just come because God said male and female. He created them. You have a role to play in being virtuous. You have a role to play in being prepared, submissive, with a meek and a quiet spirit. Are we together? And then God has a role to play in convicting the brother and bringing him into your life. You want to become an exceptional CEO. You want to become a very great person. You have a role to play. To have a teachable heart and the humility to be mentored and to be shown the pathway that leads to a great life. God's own is to back up and reward your humility with the required information and access to the right people. Every outcome in your life, including the prayer of salvation, as free as it looks, you have to participate. This is a revelation many people in the body do not know. So they leave everything to God. Father, I have five children. You gave them to me. I, I release them back to you. If you don't pay their school fees, that's your business. Now, that looks spiritual. I lift it up. There is a book in a library. How to come out of financial struggles. You look at it and pass and go to a restaurant. That's the answer to your prayer. You ignore it. There is free to air. Where a man of God like Samadhemi is preaching from his years of labor. And telling you there is a reason why your life is where it is. You just laugh and say all these men. You change the channel. You have demonstrated your unwillingness to experience that dimension of God. Are we together? There is always a part I have to play. Even in the arrival of the anointing in my life, if the anointing just arrived anyhow, everybody will have it. The anointing does not just land like a plane anywhere. Planes don't land anywhere. They have designated places. Well prepared intentionally for their landing. If a plane lands in a forest, what do you call it? Plane crash. You don't call it plane landing plane crash because it landed in a not designated place. Let me tell you the anointing of the spirit is holy and precious. It will not just land on any head like that. That head must be prepared for the anointing to come. A body has thou prepared. Not a body did you make available. You prepared it. Esther prepared herself to meet the king. The Bible says that Dothan uh, um, um, prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Are you preparing your way to be successful or are you hoping that you will be successful? Please sit down. There are many of our loved ones who are not preparing for anything, yet they believe in their hearts that they will be successful. Ask them what they are doing. Ask many pastors, what are you doing for an extraordinary ministry? And they tell you, I'm waiting on God. Wonderful. You finish the fast. What did God tell you to do? There is always something to do to get a desired outcome. There is always something to do to get a desired outcome. God will always commit a responsibility to you. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day. Right? that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. It will not happen by default. Hear me, brothers and sisters. There is the labor dimension of faith. There is the labor dimension of faith. There is the labor dimension of faith. It's not free. It's not a gift. So lazy people have no place 
in the realms of greatness completely there is no provision for that say a renewed mind the question I want to ask you very quickly this night is what are you doing to renew your mind what show me the spiritual investments show me the intellectual investments you are making now that you have acknowledged that something about your paradigm is responsible for the quality of your life even if you don't have any money in your hand show me what you are doing I don't mean what business show me the materials you are accessing let me see the voices that you are submitting to for mentorship and, and, and transformation you know in Nigeria everybody is a guy of himself are we together everybody is the boss of himself regardless of how ignorant we are we claim we are the gods of ourselves we know everything we live in a world all by ourselves that's the recipe for failure as bad as this economy is there are people this is about the best year for them so far without exaggeration in every white this is the year their wives gave birth this is the year they became millionaires this is the, the year God shamed their enemies. I mean, they've had, they, they, it's been a bed of roses from January till now. To a point that they're even afraid to testify it. Because people would think they're lying. Yet for others, this is the worst year. They can't wait for December. In Egypt, there was utter darkness. Children were dying. In Goshen, there was life there was light, there was rejoicing. It's up to you to turn your life to Egypt or Goshen. You turn it by light, a paradigm shift. The Bible says, ask for the ancient path. Don't guess, ask for it. It's been found already. There are keys that are responsible for abundance. The key is not business. There are keys responsible for their abundance. There are keys responsible for joy. Joy. There are keys that can take you out of inferiority. Complex. There are keys that can help you rise above failure. There are keys that can motivate you through times of pain. There are paradigms. There are understandings. Please hear me. Hear me in the name of Jesus Christ. Invest in changing your mind. Don't invest in dumping informations in your mind. Make sure the informations are worth um, committing yourself to the light you have must be bright enough to turn your night to morning it's not enough to have light is it bright enough stars shine in the night but you still call it night but when the sun comes night turns to day the light you have is it bright enough to make your night become morning because for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together I am obsessed with knowing where I am missing it in life. My heart is passionate. I pursue wisdom. I pursue wisdom like a jewel that is missing. There is no price that is too much to pursue uncommon mentorship, to pursue wisdom. I listen to people. I listen to ministers whose lives have produced the results that I desire with all humility. That's why I respect the Bible. I don't just read it. I don't just believe it. I truly respect it because this is a compendium of God's wisdom. Any man who walks with the light that is written here will change his life. This is what changed my life so far. How could I ignore it? I don't read it to get a message. I don't read it to cry so that I can speak well. They are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Please pay attention on developing your mind. Jordan bookstore is here. Jordan is here seated. Buy the truth and sell it not. Look for the areas in your life where the devil is singing choruses and marching unhindered and find relevant materials. By the grace of God, we have taught different messages across different places. If the economy is whipping you financial dominion, part one to four, the wealthy place, right? Activating seasons of greatness. Activating breakthrough, the ministry of destiny help us. Extraordinary accomplishment, the cost. Sit down with these teachings and listen to them. And stand up 
with both the knowledge and the impartation and change your life he says they that sat in darkness have seen a great light it was a lamentation in Nephtha and Zebulun he said they that sat in darkness have seen a great light you don't rise because of desire until your light comes you will never rise say amen the Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds to be transformed by the renewing of our minds I'd like you to pray very quickly in one minute and say father every mindset that has limited my life whether it came from culture whether it came from my upbringing every mindset reveal it to me and I'm willing to drop it go ahead and pray in one minute very quickly every mindset that is keeping me poor no matter what I do money doesn't come to me every mindset that keeps me limited it looks like I'm a failure in everything in relationships I'm a failure every mindset that makes good things leave me please change my mindset it may not be my fault I inherited it is what my father taught me is what my mother taught me is what my culture taught me people in my family and my lineage that's what they believe but Lord I submit to you lift me beyond culture you raise me up so I can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy sea I am strong when I am on your shoulder you raise me up I went up by revelation listen sit down please your mindset must change years ago the Lord spoke to me and told me that I was hosting mindsets that came sincerely but were responsible for the limitation in my life and because you see let me tell you something by God's grace and by the privilege of God's mercies I've always been a very intelligent person all through my life it's been like that God's grace on my life and intelligent people are arrogant people it's very difficult for them to admit there is something more that they do not know are we together and so when God brought me to a point I had to break my pride and say look young man you grew up in a family under a father and a mother, under a culture, under a government, under a system. And your life is inevitably a reflection of their highest level of mental transformation. And so their limitation has now become your limitation. The height they got to is where you are now. And if you don't know more, you will remain there forever. You want to rise higher? It's not just my duty alone. You must get new information and I started sitting down under the mentorship of great men like Bishop David Oyedeko, great men like Dr. Miles Munro, Dr. Mike Mudok. I wanted to change my mind. I was humble and I was intentional about it. The things I read stung my ego. Some of their teachings directly insulted me, but I had to humble myself and say, look, I needed this. I wanted the anointing of the spirit in my life I met a lot of people who were not anointed and they told me what they felt was the formula I tried it it didn't work and I knew that that was why they were not anointed so I started looking for those who were truly anointed like Benny Hinn and I found the secrets love everybody but don't follow everybody please be very unapologetic about not following people who do not have results it doesn't mean you castigate people doesn't mean you criticize people I have no loyalty for anybody who doesn't have results you can teach me how to live well a social life how to be a kind person but when it comes to the areas I want results I find people who have exceptional results that are a bar and a standard that's why I love Jesus his life inspires me when I read about Jesus I'm amazed at how invincible he was who you are following who you have allowed access to your mind is shaping the results of your life. 
And that's why every pastor must know that every member that sits down under your anointing and under your grace is a trust from God. They bring their minds and they bring their experiences in submission. Two hours, three hours every week for the rest of their lives. You better don't give them trash. You've got to give them something that will grant them access to rise. That's why every man of God must not only be anointed, you must be vast. Go for information and bring time-tested principles that can help the people of God. They will thank you, they will market you, they will bless God and they will pray for you. But you teach men junk that destroys their life, they will hate you, they will curse you and they will make sure they participate in the downfall of your life and your ministry. Number three, time is gone. The third key you need to rise above the vicissitudes of life. The third key you need to live a life of transgenerational relevance and impact. The third key is the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities. Oh, I could spend the whole night teaching on this. The discovery, write it down. It's not as simple as you think it is. The discovery and the development of yourself first your intrinsic value not just what you offer yourself the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities in one word value everybody say value those who are enjoying right now regardless of the economic recession those who are enjoying right now regardless of government policies are those who have proven themselves to be men and women of value men and women of value value is a description of the solutions you possess that can change the life of a person and a territory value is a description of the abilities you have that can prefer pragmatic practical solution to the problems of mankind I was teaching we're on a series the last series in the school of ministry and his finance and I was teaching the school of ministry and I was challenging them yesterday and telling them that the reason why many people are poor is not because of witches and wizards they are poor because they do not have any value in exchange for the rewards they desire they want rewards without value are we together someone can look at this ministry and see how God has helped us financially and with the level he has helped us and think how can young people be this blessed it's not about being young it's about being valuable are we together when a woman who has been barren for 10 years comes and in 2 months she takes her child that's result say result shout it again that's exactly what you need to prosper results not stories creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God they are waiting for the manifestation that your life becomes an unending stream of results for people if Christianity didn't have results you would not be part of it I guarantee you salvation is a result Jesus said it he did it we are witnesses and participants so we worship him are we together anybody who cannot produce results in our economy today is the person who will beg forever all kinds of results a pastor who does not stay with God to have dramatic supernatural results I don't mean falling down and rising up results of salvation results of changed lives results of the supernatural at work in the lives of people no results no value no reward it's as simple as that the discovery and the development of your giftings of your ability is the key to your exit from a life of mediocrity listen to my message activating seasons of greatness i teach there that the secret of greatness is favor but that favor does not happen on its own favor is dependent on many factors the gift of a man proverbs 18 16 the gift of a man and i always add the gift that is developed and deployed not discovered crude oil that is discovered does not bring money when it is refined then it can bring you resources. There are many of us who are sitting on gold mines and yet languishing in poverty and pain. There are families with potentials to rise above certain realms of mediocrity, spiritually and otherwise. 
but the inability to discover and develop our giftings this is a gift it has earned people money Don Muen has blessed the world with it he's also eating with it this thing I'm doing proffering supernatural solutions has brought wealth to people and has blessed others in ways that are beyond imagination listen you must make up your mind that you are going to be a man or a woman of extreme value extreme value make sure you don't just write value extreme value intellectually spiritually extreme value you must be a master at something that is in demand and people will veto your background they will veto your limitations and they will bless you and call it a privilege value are you valuable tell me what about your life will make me desire you tell me what about your life will make me pay you and not feel the pain I told you the true measure of your value is when no amount given to you for your value becomes too much when people can give you 10 million and still call it a privilege you are extremely valuable no man is indispensable but there are people who are very difficult to replace may you be such a person in the name of Jesus I made up my mind that I will be extremely valuable as a man of God extremely valuable as a leader and the key is not to make noise the key is not to snap pictures and go on Facebook snap near a Lamborghini the key is not to go around and, and carry all kinds of shirts huh? Angela Galasso and wear Tom Ford and say so oh, these are designers I'm wearing it that's not the key to be valuable the key to be valuable is to sit down invest in yourself sharpen your gifts Kabaratakaya as a man of God that when you hold the mic and you teach the word of God as you minister one hour under your anointing somebody is waiting with an envelope to sow and he says sir grant me the privilege to tap into this grace Jesus prepared for 33 years for 30 years he made himself extremely valuable we've not reco recovered from the honor we accrue to him today question are you valuable in your place of work are you valuable right now they are downsizing people if they downsize you you are not valuable it's as simple as that are you rising to a place of value I told you there's no such thing as learned that, that is our, our our civilization has made that concept extinct you are either learning or you are unlearned there's no such thing as I'm learned progressive growth progressive development and David served his generation pastors are you preparing to serve your generation business people are you preparing to serve your generation if you have a restaurant and um, in this day and age your food is still smelling smoke you are not serving your generation you are serving a generation that does not need your service are we together if you are a professional typist you are not serving your generation the generation that needed you has gone are we together are you getting what I'm saying you are a tailor are you serving your generation don't say people are not coming why should I come can you serve me are we together you are fixing phones and I bring a phone of 200,000 and you look at me and say eh, sorry sir this is not the type we fix I will not come again because what you said is that I have pegged myself I have refused to develop myself to be able to provide services at that level are we together yeah the minimum standard in the world is excellence you must prepare to serve your generation I preach in all kinds of places and I can tell you it's not just preaching by the anointing alone you must understand the systems and the environment and the protocol of where you are going to by the truth please I like you to challenge yourself and say I must be valuable say it stop envying people stop getting angry stop wishing 
Rise up and be valuable. Being valuable may require you taking extra courses and trainings. Some of us, what you want to be valuable about may require you going to school again to further. Some of you, being valuable will require you sitting with certain levels of books. Some of you, it will require you being a protege to a mentor directly over a season to learn. Whatever price it takes to have capacity to serve your generation, go for it. Are we together now? Yes. Be valuable. It's not what you are doing. It's how you are doing it. Develop your gifts. Develop your gifts. In this day and age, you want to be a worshiper. You come and hold the mic and you are chewing your mouth. You are talking rubbish. People don't have... There are too many options. Too many options. As a keyboardist, you can only play two or three keys. You are not a keyboardist. You are, you are, you are a freelance... Um, explorer of your hobbies <laughs> anything worth doing is worth doing extremely well it was our fathers who says worth doing well now it's not worth doing well it's worth doing extremely hear what I'm saying you claim you're a consultant I give you a material to prepare for me arrange it intelligently and you write nonsense your grammatic construction rubbish right your the points your persuasions are nonsense all your facts are outdated will i come to you again will i come to your institute again no sir even if you are my brother call it david school of research i'm not coming there again call it whatever you want to call it we must strive for excellence we must strive for mastery. The Bible says, and if a man desires mastery, yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully. There are rules. It says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all. We've taken time, we're going to pray, but I want you to get this. You must get it. You must get this. You must get this. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Proverbs 22 verse 29 Seest thou a man diligent Seest thou a man flawless Seest thou a man creative Seest thou a man exceptional In whatever it is that he does There is an assurance That he shall stand before kings He shall not stand before mean men The reason why many people are standing before mean men Including pastors the reason why they may never invite you to speak in a meeting or a conference somewhere is you have not proven to have the ability. You may have the anointing but you've not worked on your communication skills. You stand on stage and twist your tongue. Nobody is hearing what you are saying. You preach like you are talking to yourself. You are not clear. Your points are not objective enough. They are not persuasive enough. You may be anointed but you may never go far. When you are talking to your villagers they will hear you. When you are talking to the world, they won't hear you. So if you want to remain in your village, you act like them. You think like them. You talk like them. When you want to rise, you become world class. You reinvent yourself. Nobody was born with anything. You can re-engineer yourself. Are we together? Challenge yourself. You are a tailor. All your customers have all the clothes they need. Go and reinvent yourself. Go back for a three months training. Go, to, go somewhere. Meet someone who has been trained in UK or in Italy. Meet someone who has worked with a designer company. Don't work with mediocres. You will be like them. And don't let anybody preach you into thinking all that is required for greatness is just prayer. You need to reinvent yourself. It's a lie that many people have carried for a very long time. And they are paying for it right now takes more than prayer you must prepare yourself Nehemiah on one hand held the sword on another hand he was building the fence I Daniel understood by books the Bible says buy the truth and sell it not men will not give you free money like that the days of free lunch are over until you show what value you have that merits being a millionaire Everybody just jumps. I'm a millionaire. Ooh, glory. We keep mocking ourselves. 
You don't become a millionaire by jumping. You offer the value that will compel millions coming to you. God can give you access. It's up to you to take advantage of the access. So I go back working on myself. I'm not satisfied with the level of value that I'm communicating. Now I'm telling you, the level of anointing that I desire to walk in, I've not even come near it. I've not scratched the surface to it. The level of grace and the, the dimension in the spirit that I trust to be operating in. Hmm. You get to a dimension where everybody who comes to you knows his life is changed. His own sacrifice is just to see you. Hmm. That is such a realm. When you get to that realm, no witch, I guarantee you, no wizard, even if the wizard comes for service, he will be part of those who will bless you. At that level, you don't pray for needs again. You just pray that the needs don't kill you. Are you ready to reinvent yourself? Are you ready to sit down don't run around with albums. I want to produce album. The producer who is producing doesn't know what he's doing. You, the singer, doesn't know what. You don't know any rules about music. You want to produce your album because you are hoping the members in your church will buy it. I don't listen to a song just because it's spiritual. I have ears. Physical ears. I listen to a song that is musically sound well composed, intelligently directed and spiritually presented that's the kind of thing to listen to are we together you serve restaurant, you say the most important thing is the balanced diet, no, I eat emotionally before physically I need to eat with my mind, my eyes my mouth, all of them must participate in the food, if it's not presentable carry your food away, I will not buy it I'm a member of Koinonia. I, I bless God for you. I will keep blessing you every Friday, but I'm not going to come to your restaurant. As simple as that. I bring you clothes as a tailor. You sew what you want to sew. Put pockets anywhere. Put the design anywhere. And waste materials anyhow. I'm not coming again. Very simple. Please reinvent yourself. Turn and prophesy to somebody. Say, be valuable. Be valuable. Our time is up. We're going to pray, but be valuable. Go for knowledge. Don't snore your destiny. Almost every information you need to rise is free. You just need to have the discernment to access it. It's free, but it's not cheap. It's free, but it's not cheap. I don't like lazy people. Truly, truly, I resent an attitude of laziness. People who are complacent with where they are. No, sir. You should rise to a position where no devil and no culture. As far as I'm concerned, Koinonia has not risen to one-tenth of the level of excellence we should be. All what we are doing compared to where we are going is rubbish, complete rubbish. It's just that we will permit this just because we are still preparing for that level. This, this is complete nonsense. No, this, this does not look like the blueprint. Are you challenging yourself to that level? Miracle services... This, this miracle service, this one is this, this is Tuesday prayer band in fact this is not even Tuesday prayer this is depart unit meeting by the time we truly start miracle service in Koinonia you will know it's a miracle service hmm. that's what we should do refuse to be satisfied where somebody comes for Koinonia on a wheelchair and just as he crosses that place just crossing that place he stands up the service has not started. And then nobody shouts because we see it all the time. Now that's a level. That's a dimension. Where every woman who delays doesn't give birth to a child, gives birth to at least twins, minimum. Restoration plus breakthrough in one equation. Now that's result. You carry a dead body and just put him close to any car, anybody. The security man's gone, just touches the child and he comes back to life. It's a level. We can rise to that level. In your joke, you are joking, yet he's bringing the anointing. Because of how much you are infused with the anointing. Next week, we'll talk about the last dimension. Rise up on your feet, please. I'm tired of the status quo. 
There's gotta be more than this I'm tired of the status quo There's gotta be more than this it's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. Prayer point number one Lord, I'm tired of where I am. Take me higher. Take me higher. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of my level of life. This level is bringing me pain. This level is bringing me limitation, intellectual limitation, spiritual limitation, leadership limitation. Pray, pray. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Lord, I express my dissatisfaction for this level of life. For this level of life. For this level of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, access to information that represent my mindset for the next level. Bring it to me. Pray. Access. Materials. Books. Men. Supply of superior information. I cannot remain at the mental level that caused the problems I am in now. I need a higher mentality, higher than culture. I need a higher paradigm, a higher paradigm. Pray, I embrace transformation, the renewal of my mind, the renewal of my mind, the editing of my paradigm. I embrace a life of excellence. I embrace a life of competence. Mindsets that are limited. Ideologies that are limited. I drop them. I drop them. I drop them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wrong mindsets about ministry. Wrong mindsets about business. Wrong mindsets about education. Wrong mindsets about marriage. Wrong mindsets about finances. I drop it. I drop it. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing... I'm seeing a vision... I'm seeing a vision and in this vision I'm seeing chains. This is what I'm seeing. Before I even start the mass prayer, I'm seeing chains and those people are affected. The power of God is going to begin to come upon them inside and outside. I'm seeing chains. This is the spirit of delay. I'm seeing delay written in the atmosphere delay delay i'm going to begin to pray listen there are people whose lives and destinies have been held bound by the spirit of delay by the spirit of delay no matter where you are inside or outside it's like a force an energy of the spirit i want to help those people outside here Lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted inside and outside. Just lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands towards you. And as I stretch my hands towards you and begin to speak, it's like fire 
the power of God will begin to come upon such people those who are outside you can stretch your hands just over your, your various projectors in the name of the Lord Jesus that spirit I speak to you in the realm of the spirit you have held the destinies of men and women you have held the destinies of families but the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob will possess their possession therefore I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus and I speak every spirit of delay right now right now right now I stretch my hands by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I stretch it right now bring them out the year of multiplied grace I stretch my hand the angels of the, of the Lord are moving row to row row to row row to row it will get to your turn inside and outside row to row if that's not your situation it will not affect you but you will never stand the power of God if this is one of the reasons God brought you here right now I stretch my hand outside lift your hands the angels of the Lord are moving Lord every row every row I keep my hands stretched that devil of delay you must leave you must leave you must leave the second overflow God is touching people there the second overflow like fire is coming upon people the second overflow that spirit of delay your time is up tonight your time is up tonight maka para to sotosh embrekete leko sheketa there's a lady wearing white hair tie the anointing of the spirit is causing that delay that delay right now that delay right now right now right now right now is a spell is like a charm I'm seeing it on the heads of people I command that spell that charm of delay you must leave you must leave you must leave I tell you no spirit will stand the power of God tonight no you must let them go in the name of the Lord Jesus I come against you I come against you I come against you. Delay is a dangerous thing. It traps your life so that when you ought to move and make significant progress, it will hold you bound. There are many lives and destinies that are tied down families please lift your hands the Lord is telling me that he wants to visit the root of witchcraft in families pay attention to what I'm saying because the power of God will move in a mighty way there are families here hear me you love God, but you do not know what is at the root of the tragedies of the families. There are spirits, there are covenants, there are fraternities with darkness that have kept families bound. It may not even be your fault. You are inheriting the wickedness of men. But tonight, lift your hands.
I want to pray for you. 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 As I speak over your life, again, the Lord is going to be ministering to families. It may not have anything to do with you as a person. Some of you, you will step into visions immediately and begin to see a lot of destruction and havoc going on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying right now inside the first overflow the second overflow across the road every family that is under the influence of any satanic manipulation lord you will not only identify them they must be free at the count of three i want you to shout i am free are you ready now one two three shake it take it take it shake it take it take it Altars, 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 altars. I call you by your name and I curse you by the God of heaven. I call you by your name. Altars in Benway State, altars in Kogi State, altars in Kaduna State, altars in the West. Altars in the east, my goodness. Every local government, every state, I set fire on those altars. Fire, 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 fire on those altars fire on those altars every covenant with the waters every covenant with the air every covenant with the earth every covenant of darkness tying families i declare that this is your time of jubilee i send the word of judgment I send a word of judgment. Hallelujah. I wish the Lord can open your eyes to see the mighty things that are happening. Mighty things that are happening. Hallelujah. Listen. Something very strange will start happening here now. Listen. Listen to me. Because I just saw a vision like a bunch of keys. It just dropped on the ground. Listen. This, this is a sign of access in the spirit. The Lord showed me a vision and I saw in the spirit a bunch of keys. Now it's not for everybody but I'm about to pray. Once it comes on you, except God did not call me, you will see doors open. It's called breakthrough. Lift your head. I stand under this apostolic anointing and in the name of Jesus every destiny that needs this breakthrough at the count of three receive it receive it take it now 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 i distribute those keys in the spirit i distribute those keys inside and outside in the name of jesus in the name of jesus by the blood of the eternal covenant breakthroughs 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 the opening up of destinies the opening up of destinies the opening up of destinies 
Shekaba Katalabatos, Sekete Katababa, Kaparato Sokotos, Emprekete Lekotosata. Listen, those of you outside, I want you to hear me because the Holy Spirit is going to do something now. The Lord asked me to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want down three. My goodness, there is such anointing in this place. And I see the angels, the Lord. The moment you count three, I'm going to start moving across this crowd. And the power of God will start falling on people. Whatever has locked your destiny, it must open it right now. Are you ready now, those outside? Please believe we are not playing games. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the angels move in this crowd. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, shout at one, two, three. Receive it right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. I stretch my hands as I move across. Let an anointing come. As I pass your row, as I pass your row, you will stand it. As I pass your row, an anointing, an anointing. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. Take it now. I stretch my hand. Take it. Take it. This side, receive it. Take it now. 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 I stretch my hands. Take it now. Take it now. Everyone in this row, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Take it now. All those here, there is an angel of the Lord standing on your robe. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Just allow me to pass your robe. As I'm coming, there are angels walking with me. As I'm coming, the power of God will touch you right now. I stretch my hands here. Everyone here, right now, take it now. Take it right now. Take it right now. In the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands to you. Call this man. Come. This big man. Come. What's your name? Come now. Let's hurry up. What's your name? The Lord is saying, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, from where? From Edo State, sir. From Edo State. I mean, are you in Zaria? In Zaria. You are in Zaria. I want you to rejoice because you have entered a new level this night. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As you celebrate them, you connect to their prophecy. Listen, because I'm seeing you in a cage. This is what I see. I've not started prophesying yet, but I'm seeing you in a cage. And I'm seeing you telling the Lord, I know that if I come here, my situation will change. In the name that is above all names, I lay my hands upon you and I end that captivity right now. Take it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is grace? There's someone grace around here. Who is grace? I'm hearing that the Lord is showing me someone grace. Who is grace? Please come quickly. Let's save time. Come. Where is your mother? Zango. Zango. Is she sick? My sister is sick. Don't worry. Is your mother sick? She doesn't even know she's sick but she's sick. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going to your house and healing two people. Your mother and your sister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your mother and your sister. What do you do? You're a student. What do you do? Huh? Applicant. Job applicant. Do you believe that if I pray for you, the Lord will give you a job? Will you come and testify before God's people? I lay my hands upon you and I release that job for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From this road down like this, there are a number of ladies with abdominal pain. Because I'm seeing like the angel of the Lord is doing something. I stretch my hands right now. Whoever they are, the power of God is coming upon them right now. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that pain, that abdominal pain must go. It must go right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me try to walk to the first overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
look at me you will start experiencing the power of god in your life in a very strange way are you hearing what i'm saying i lay my hands upon you right now step into a new season i want to pray for this overflow there are so many people please believe god don't think i've come outside because i want to identify with you so you don't think you are at a disadvantage no distance is no barrier some of you are enduring cold is touching my heart talk more of the heart of god are you hearing what i'm saying and some of you need to watch because what you are seeing me do is what you will be doing in some years to come so just watch it you are just receiving miracles there is an impartation joseph who is joseph here yeah. joseph i'm hearing a name joseph you are wearing like a collar like for cold who is that you are joseph the lord is going to do mighty things through you stand up there's cold so you don't enjoy yourself are you hearing me i want to stay true with god and watch god do great things in your life in the name of jesus i'm seeing two old women they are sitting on the same seat where are they here this row two mama like this where are they is there some who is that the lord is asking me to talk to them just leave them mama do i know you have we seen before i'm looking at you can, can they if they cannot hear we can speak any language can i talk to you mama i'm looking at you and i'm seeing the spirit of death over your head when I'm, don't be afraid i'm seeing the spirit of death over your head and the Lord is saying, if we don't pray for you, that's how you'll be getting up and a bike will collide with a car. It's like a station wagon and it will kill you for nothing. But the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. The second thing is there's no finances at all. Everything flat. Is that true? Is that true in your life? Is what the, why you came? Where is your daughter? Do you have a daughter? Huh? I'm seeing a lady close to you. Like a, a, I don't know if she's a, a daughter or a logical or not. Because I'm seeing the Lord is saying that he wants to bless her with marriage. You are the one? Okay, you are the one standing close to her. Are you ready to marry? Because God is going to surprise you. Do you believe that? Huh? Say I receive. I receive. I receive. You are not, you are, you are trying to, uh, first lady, but my dear, prophecy, you see a madman like this. I'm only responding to God. Just out and see what the anointing does. Shout, I receive as loud as receive jesus christ i break that curse over your head mama you will not die all of you here stretch your hands to her and say mama will not die take us your mother pray for her mama will not die in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm looking at this other mama i don't know what's wrong with this woman but there are three things i see the devil want to do number one eyes ah huh? but two i'm seeing her inside a coffin they have already closed it and there's blood on top of the coffin are you hearing what i'm saying? somebody use her eyes to make money with it this is what the lord is showing me i'm not a prophet of doom me too, don't like what i'm saying but i cannot but say what god is asking me to say are you hearing what i'm saying I'm seeing a lady here. I'm, I'm still going to come in, please. We're trying to work with the time. Um, but I'm seeing a lady here. How you know is the power of God is about to come upon you right now. One of the ladies here. This is witchcraft that has destroyed the life of your family. And the Lord wants me to minister to you in this other overflow. Father, wherever she is right now, locate her. The power of God is going to come on one lady right now. It will be like fire. You can't stand it. It will come upon you. Please, when that happens, let me know that lady right now. Not just those inside. I know God is... But this role, this role, Father, wherever that lady is, I'm declaring right now by the anointing of the Spirit of God that she will be located so that her can be free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, your name means joy. It's a tribal name, but it has joy. It's like it. Who is that person, please? Your name means joy. That's if you translate your name, it has something to do with joy. Joy or joyful or something like that. Do we have someone like that? Please make sure you are telling the truth so that it doesn't look like we're acting. If, if you are that couple with the protocol, who is that? What's that? Uh? Come. 
What's your name? Omotayo means what? Child of joy. I want to pray for you. Where is your mother? She's in Kaduna. Is this working? Okay. Tell your mother her time will Lay hands on you. And I want that if you go back and see your mom, just ask her to allow you to break through. My hands upon you right now. I don't mean their English names are Joy. What's, what's your name? From where? Your name is All of you. Where is your family? Kaduna, I'm going to pray for you. Because that has tied your family down. I look at me, look at me. Does it make sense to you? The Lord is dead because I'm seeing your family tied down in witchcraft. And God is saying that he's lifting them up by his grace. Father, let it end right now. Out of this family. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands on all of you. I lay my hands upon you. Help her, please. Help her so that she Who is that? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please hold on. There is a lady wearing white scarf. She's on at the wall. She's leaning on the wall. Where is that lady? Please bring her. I'm seeing in a vision, there's a lady wearing white scarf. White scarf. Is there someone like that? You are leaning on the fence. White scarf. Who is that? Is there someone like that? Give God a praise. Who is that? What's your name? Favor. But there's nothing favorable in your life. And the Lord is saying, change her story. Do I know you that your name is favor? I want to pray for you. Do you believe if I pray for you, the Lord will grant you favor? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I restore favor to you right now. I restore favor to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, my dear. This lady, yes, come. Hallelujah. There is an anointing. Listen. There is an anointing. Um, I promise those of you outside, by the grace of God, hopefully by next miracle service, we'll try to work on amplifying the sound so that it will, it will be very clear for you outside. All right? I know that the people did their best, but you can see that the crowds are increasing. Praise the Lord. But there was an anointing that was upon Esther. It's called the favor anointing. In the course of the meeting, I'm going to be praying for people. But the Lord is saying I should minister this to you. Do you believe it? Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this lady and I release this grace upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, I release this anointing upon her. In the name of Jesus, who came from Kano? I'm seeing Kano. Come. You are not alone. You are with one lady. Where are you? Huh? Two of you. Husband and wife. Come. Did you tell me you are coming? Come. She's your friend. Who is she? How are you, my dear? You came from Kano. What do you do? I'm see. I, I'm, no, you are not just a student. There's something else you are doing. I'm teaching. You are teaching. How about her? Witchcraft is what God is breaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm seeing something like a chain leaving your friend. I command that chain to leave right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you and I, I command that chain to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for you I declare. You will step into a new dimension of intimacy with God. That's what you need. You have been praying. You fasted. Help him. You fasted that God will give you an anointing. It's not an anointing for ministry. It's an anointing for fellowship with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ look at me what has happened to your music ministry that's what the Lord is saying I should tell you huh? do you sing sing something let's hear my God is awesome he will move the whole world what has happened to your music ministry God gave you an anointing you have been playing games with it come because God wants to restore that fire as soon as I pass you I saw I saw I heard like music and God says restore his music ministry there are three things that can destroy a man's ministry any ministry one pride huh? two women or men or anything just human beings are you hearing what I'm saying and then number three is premature exposure when people don't stay with the spirit to create a track record but i'm going to pray for you huh you, your characters you, you must you must behave well behave like where you are going are you hearing what i'm saying this is you you need a lot of restoration in your life it's not because anything is wrong you, it's just that you need to step up otherwise you will not experience the grace of god but there is an anointing upon your music ministry and i lay my hands upon you right now you step into that level in the name of Jesus Christ all of you here please lift your hands I want to pray for you please lift your hands and believe as I pray for you and I count three I want you to shout the name Jesus there are people here under yokes and spells as soon as you shout that name Jesus the anointing of the Spirit will move through this very overflow this very overflow I wanted to leave but God is still speaking to me about this overflow please I want you to believe help them so they don't fall inside the gutter father I'm doing as you have instructed me and I prophesy right now that as they all shout the name of Jesus let the power of God visit the foundations of every family represented here are you ready now at the count of three one two three right now in the name of Jesus right now help them right now in the name of Jesus I cause that spirit 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 from your life and your destiny there is a, a man that appears to one lady here as I pray for you now fire is coming upon you you will never see that man again not in your dreams I command him go 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 in the name of Jesus Christ I bring you deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit it never comes to you again never 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 in the name of Jesus greater strength greater prayer fire greater prayer fire greater prayer fire in the name of Jesus the lady with the black heart tap that lady for me look at me stretch your hands where you are an anointing is coming upon you right now beauty for ashes says the spirit beauty for ashes I release that anointing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ before I leave this place there are seven people the spirit of prayer is coming upon you right now seven people Lord where are they right now right now across this place seven people it's like fire to come upon you some are men some are women take it take it take it right now take it right now the spirit of prayer the spirit of prayer the spirit of prayer 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 the spirit of prayer like never before tap this lady for me the Lord is visiting you and he's wiping your tears in the name of Jesus the Lord is saying he's wiping your tears by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is wiping your tears in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is wiping your tears let it end right now let it end now now never to return to you again never to return I stretch my hands all over this room right now right now right now right now, right now. every force of darkness never returns in the name of Jesus there is a spirit I'm dealing with I know what I'm seeing right now right now I judge you by the God of heaven right now 
let them go let them go let them go now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the hands of certain people tied here like a chain holding your hands those of you here just lift your hands don't worry once it constants you you cannot stand it father visit them right now you will feel like literally fire on your hands a chain is breaking right now I stretch my hands let it break 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 now 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 let it break I break it by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost now I break that chain in the name of Jesus I break that chain in the name of Jesus I break that chain in the name of Jesus I restore your glory I restore your glory in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus please pray and ask the Lord to visit you pray and ask the Lord to visit you aha aha you must go in the name of Jesus you must go 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 any spirit represented here you must leave right now I tell you any force of darkness tying down your life Hold on, please. Hold on. Who is this, Mama? My brother. What's wrong with your marriage? This person I'm seeing was supposed to die October 21st. It's because of prayer. Because you used to carry this picture everywhere you go. I'm seeing you in a meeting. Stand up, madam. I'm seeing you in a meeting. No, no, no. Please. This is help her with a handkerchief. This is a mother. You don't have to cry, please. This woman you are seeing is a very good woman. I'm seeing you in all kinds of meetings. You are not even concerned about your own problem. You are lifting up this person because I'm seeing 21st October. It was to be to die and please, mama, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ because you too you have problems but you are not even concerned about your problem you are not concerned about what is happening to your finances you are not concerned about the pain in your back you keep feeling pain in your back when you wait as i enter here i hear my pain go just go away the pain just went away when she came here look at this even before the meeting from kaduna me and my hold on Okay. I'm all away from Kaduna. We, my children sleep with your, with your scriptures. We work with your scriptures. Even if I will go and pass urine, the scriptures is on. The two of them are pastors. One is here. The other one is here. I finished university here in Abbey. Just this prayer, I mean, we do. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I have a ministry. <laughs> you have a ministry. My goodness. Can you imagine? I'm looking at you. What is I'm seeing your ministry has something to do with spring. There's spring. There's spring. In the name that is above all names. Mama, listen. Please don't cry. The Lord is visiting you. Because this woman you see is an intercessor. This woman can stay for hours praying for people who are not even her. It's none of her business. As the Holy Spirit ministers to her you see but nothing is changing in your own life you pray for people and god will do miracles it's true. is that true the lord says i should tell you your whole life would you Amen. hallelujah please come follow me mama the lord is wiping Amen. are you hearing what i'm saying the lord is wiping your tears who is this Huh? Ah, mommy, this is not your son. Hold on. This boy is not your... You are calling him son, but he's not your son. Because I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing a father. Where's your father? He's dead, sir. Father is dead. And this is what the Lord... I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing father. It's like the father is related to you. He's my elder. Boy. And so you took him as your son. That's why you are calling him son. But this boy is not your son. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ... The Lord is going to use you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? Mommy, you, 
God is wiping your tears because this finance, the thing can't just enter your hand. It will enter and go out. And we have to pray. Because the people that killed his father want to destroy you. And we have to pray. I'm not, I don't want you to feel bad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's gone and but we are not just going to allow it happen until they come and kill mama. And it's because of the destiny of this person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is going to visit you in a way that will surprise you. What's wrong with him? You see, Ba, what the Lord is showing me, I'm not going to say everything here, but what the Lord is showing me, today, they will see that he has one sickness. They will do another test. Huh? They will do a scan and come out with something else. The devil is just playing, using medicine to play with your mind. This is witchcraft. They have already buried this person and this issue has finished. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm declaring and I'm speaking to everyone here. I stand under the anointing and I pray for you that every power that is tying down your family, it must leave you this night in the name of Jesus. It must leave you this night. It must go, 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 go. Go. The same thing, it must go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please come, madam. The Lord is saying, I shall anoint you. Come. You are going to do great things for God. God is going to use you greatly. I know you may not think you are like that, but God will use you from today. I open your eyes to the realm of the Spirit. You will step into unusual dimensions of grace. I activate dimensions in your spirit. Elisha prayed and the eyes of the servant was open. I open your eyes to visionary encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards our mother here. This woman's situation has really touched me. Come mama. No, no, no. Mommy, please stand up. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. All the way from Kaduna. A woman with a ministry interceding for others this is our brother the devil wants to terminate the life of this person I like us to pray over this picture and say in the name of Jesus the same power that raised Christ from the dead the same power that raised Christ from the dead hallelujah mommy will you believe if I tell you you are stepping into an unusual healing ministry from tonight listen you believe with all your heart have you forgotten the dream god showed you where you saw yourself in a meeting praying for people i believe i saw it so i remember did you tell me it's now is the time for that dream to come to pass because you had a dream you saw yourself praying for people i'm just praying healing them and you are healing them and you have been interceding innocently the Lord is telling me that now is the time for your ministry to step into another level. Two areas. The issue of barrenness. The issue of barrenness. It will be like a special anointing to destroy barrenness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will come back and testify before the people of God. This thing is being recorded. And the second area. The second area is HIV. Such an anointing will come upon you. As you pray for people with HIV. Listen. Paul said, I desire to see you. He said that I may impart some spiritual gift. It doesn't matter the age. Impartation can happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying, madam? Hold my hands. I want you to shout Jesus. And watch what begins to happen to you. Go ahead. Jesus. Father, I pray from today. An anointing. An anointing, a transference of grace. An ordinary woman will become a woman of power from today. An ordinary woman will carry an anointing of the spirit in a strange way. In a strange way. Go and heal the sick. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, madam. Look at me. Come. Watch this. Mommy, lay your hand on him and pray for him. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lay your hands and speak to him. 
Look at me. You carry this anointing and you will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness. Anointing is not for show, brothers and sisters. But I tell you, it will scare you. This anointing will bring wealth to you. People will sow into your life because of the impact in her life. Come on. Go, when you go back, lay this picture on your brother and pray for him. God will take him out of that hospital. And when he does, bring him here and he will come and testify to the glory of God. The Lord told me he's wiping your tears. Come, sir. What do you do? What do you do? What did you study? I'm going to pray for you. You want to further? Yes, sir. That's what yes, sir. Political science. Sir. Because God is going to use you in the area of leadership. It was in, in prayer God put in your spirit to study political science. Amen. Although what you studied, um, I'm not seeing a university like a college or something. Federal College of Education. You study something that has to do with education. Business education. Business education. But then it's leadership. And God is taking you to that position. When you study it, he will make you a great leader. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Wait, Mr. Man. Just wait. Let me finish. I'm praying for you. Make sure when God blesses you, you never forget this woman. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You never forget this woman. She has done what for you many people will not do. She has taken you as a son. She has spent her money to the last to help you. Is that true? If you forget this woman, God will not be happy with you. Let me use this as an encouragement. You see, when somebody suffers to help you and you rise, you will be a wicked person to forget that person. Some of us are like this. Some of our parents have labored to help us. Don't say, I must be a millionaire before I bless them. The day God gives you 20,000, you can take 1,000 and say, Mama, take. Some of us are very greedy. God is blessing you, but you are still latching onto the little resources of the parents. It must change. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, take him to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I impart upon you wisdom and leadership. Occupy that mountain. Fire is coming upon your hands. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Father, visit our mother. For what you have done, Mama, my God will visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you from the depth of my heart. My God will visit you. In the name of Jesus. Please bring this woman for me. This one wearing this very one yes this she's she's not feeling fine something is wrong with her please let her come is god blessing you tonight who brought her please who brought her if you brought her please come with her so that we we'll know what it is What's wrong with her, Mama? Diabetes. Diabetes. How old is she? Do you know? Oh, you just met her, or you know her? Okay, it's your junior sister. From where? Can she hear me, or do you need somebody to talk to her in the language? You need translation. If I talk to you, can you talk to her in the language? Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to heal her of diabetes. What tribe are you, madam? Eh? You got her pastor Alpha now. Carry mic. What are you here? Oh, yeah, yeah, carry mic. Because I'm trying to, let's make this easy. Give him mic, please. Every tribe here, there must be somebody. If there's nobody who lay hands on somebody for the purpose, there's no other mic. Okay, don't worry. Come, Pastor. Tell her that Jesus Christ is going to visit her. Jesus, ask your guy by your door. Ask her question. And she can't know. Tell her, God, heal her of diabetes. Or draw her to God, diabetes. And the dream of death that she has been having. Or now, who can't know? 
What couldn't she do? Mama, ask, tell her I'm going to pray for her and the power of God will come. And me and her will run here now. I'm going to pray for her and we will not walk, we will run together. Tell her not to worry. Let, let's pray. If we do Jesus, if we do Jesus, I rebuke who dot down diabetes, diabetes from her body. In the name of Jesus, if we do Jesus, look at what is happening to her. It's a spirit. Look at. Are you seeing this? Look at the spirit. You call it sickness. Look at what is up. This is an old woman. Ah, huh? diabetes is a spirit. I command it to live now. In the name of Jesus, out of her. Mama, tell her. Tell her that she's going to do what she has never done. And she should not be afraid. Tell her to use her hands. Walk, come. Fast, come. Come, come. Turn around. Come on, give Jesus praise. Look at a miracle here. Look at a miracle. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, come on. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Hold on. Sam, give us one powerful Igala song. Where is Sam? You sang one song during Annie's wedding. Eh? Sing that song. Tell Mama she's going to dance now. Eh? And the Gala people will join her and dance to the shame of the devil. Hosanna, oh, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, oh my David. Oh, Chonuka, Wama. Hosanna. Oh Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh come on, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh come on, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh come on, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh come on, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh my David, oh John, oh come on, Hosanna, Hosanna. This miracle remains permanent forever. How many How many of you saw the way that woman was standing here? You saw the way she was standing. Look how God can change a man's story. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. There is a woman here that they brought. I don't know where she is. But I'm seeing it's, it's something that is a medical condition. I don't know if it's a fibroid or a growth. Please, who is that person? We really have to be fast. A growth, like a, I don't know if it's a growth that the person came with. They, they said the person has something like a growth. I don't know if it's a fibroid now. Whether it's... Eh? No, no, no. The person I'm talking about is here. Oh. It may be inside or outside. I'm seeing somebody. Um, it's like there's a medical condition that has to do with a swelling or growth or something. Who is that? Who is that person? Come. No, you are you are not sick. It's, it's demons. Just stand. We'll deal with that one now. Now. Your eh? No, no, no. Leave him. This your stomach is swollen. They want to kill you. 
somebody somebody hit you with something in a dream some months back you didn't even remember now your stomach is swelling we'll deal with that one i don't know you i'm just just stand there that one is, is an easy something this come the come you have a problem come up the devil I, the devil wants to destroy this lady because if i don't pray for you they will i'm seeing your case getting so serious they will now take you to india for a kidney pr transplant what's wrong with you kidney nephritis what does that mean inflammation how do you know it's the doctor told me i cannot lie on both sides of my head you can't lie down here yes and even yet i sleep straight you see the wickedness of the devil that even to sleep you can't sleep this way you can't sleep how and how else do you sleep lie down flat that devil must leave you what's your name Precious. you know how who knows her before you now start talking another rubbish story daddy please come sir our, our daddy yes sir our daddy is praying a prayer and the prayer has to do with no the hold your photo like this sir open it to the third one that's what i want to talk to you about one okay i'm seeing okay i thought it was the third one back i'm seeing another photo this thing is like it's supposed to be three it's not two where is the third one it's at home. that's the one i want to talk about that's why i said take it to the third one you brought two here but the person i want to talk about there is a third one who is in that photo henry henry because we want to pray demons stop him from coming did you ask him to come i asked him to come he chose not to that's what i'm saying if that boy had come let me tell you do you know that if 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 you can come for koinonia alone you don't want to know the powers you overcame to arrive tell somebody koinonia and see the way demons fight they are coming here flimsy excuses they will tell you uh, i just think i don't have this is because the devil knows he knows that's what happened to this person and you see today would have been his day of visitation i looked at this and i saw three because i'm not you may see me looking at you physically but i'm operating from the spirit i saw three pictures and i said go to the third one you left the third one at home just like the person to come if he agreed the holy ghost would have reminded you and forced you to carry the third one you see please brothers and sisters when you invite people and they refuse don't insult them you're a spiritual man you should know that is to you a sign that god wants them to be here are we together now daddy i'm going to talk to you now and i'll pray with you there's something about him but i will not tell you in public huh so that you will not hear that this person left the faith into something else you hear what i'm saying i don't want it's not something where this is a public talk but we don't want to hear that kind of story because it's already happening there is a spirit that converts men it doesn't happen by default we must attack it in the name of jesus christ where is this our lady come we are going to pray for this kidney both of your kidneys is verified that you have a, a kidney problem so we're going to pray lay your hands on it please can we pray for this dear one anything that happens to one of us happens to all of us don't say it's not yet my issue. Uh -uh. Pray for her. Your prayer is working. There's a surgery the Lord is doing in her. Place your hand on her. I command that devil right now out out of her that spirit masquerading as kidney kidney problem in the name of jesus christ i command a miracle for you right now i stretch my hands i make contact by the anointing of the holy ghost my goodness there's such power flowing 
I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. I declare a miracle. Stand up. Stand up. What couldn't you do before? Press it. Press it right now. Surprised that something is happening. Her and her own body. I pray that God will anoint you to be able to bring healing and deliverance to people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know how cheap the devil is until you are really anointed. If you are not anointed, you will make a ceremony out of nothing. But when that anointing is not about trying to get it done if it's there is there if it's not there is not there my dear check it honestly if there's pain tell us we will not be afraid this god is touching another lady heal her oh god in the name of jesus fire is coming on a lady's throat I don't know what has to do. I'm about to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing throat right now. There is a lady like that. Fire is coming. Something will touch your throat. It's like a sickness. My dear, I'd like you to shout, I am healed. Shout it. I am healed. Shout it again. I am healed. Shout it one more time. Go and check yourself and you come back to testify. In the name of Jesus, King Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The anointing is on that lady covering her, her mouth, her nose. This lady, I don't know who she is. I'm not, yes, that very lady you are holding. There's a strong anointing on her. Strong anointing on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strong anointing on her. We're going to be very fast because it's cold and we have to there's one of the ushers the power of god is coming on you now i know you are doing ushering work wherever you are i'm seeing an usher please bring that person right now an usher lady right now you are busy doing your work quietly but the anointing of god will land on you right now where's the usher please bring her you're an usher you are doing your work that's all right but God needs to visit you now. That you are walking, whether ushering or protocol, you mind your business. There's somebody in welfare, welfare. The power of God is coming on somebody in welfare right now. Welfare department, welfare department. I'm seeing an anointing coming on somebody in welfare department. God just does strange things. They are called signs and wonders. We really don't know why it's done. Before we continue, there's one person from protocol. That's what I see in the spirit. Protocol department. The protocol department. There's somebody that the Lord is touching right now. In protocol department, wherever you are, I really don't care where, whether inside or outside. But God is touching somebody right now. Right now in protocol department. It's like fire. It will just come on you all of a sudden it's a sign and a wonder it's a miracle please let me have those people out there's a reason why i'm calling them out that person from ushering who is that protocol department where's the person from welfare? Welfare, welfare. hallelujah bring three of them it's a prophetic language i want to tell you what god is saying through this the first impartation is God prophesying to men that you are entering into new seasons. So just like an usher brings you, it's a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release it upon you. I release it upon you right now. 
just like an usher takes you into a new level i stand under this anointing and i prophesy enter a new season enter a new dimension in the name of jesus the impartation upon the welfare person is the mystery of supplies the lord is saying he's ending stagnancy in the name of jesus christ the lord is ending stagnancy in the name of jesus christ the person from the protocol the lord is saying i will be your defender even in this season i release that word upon your life in the name of jesus christ please everyone that came with a sick person um it's already happening to pastor femi but pastor femi and three members of rema will come under the anointing right now three members who are members of rema chapel that's what i'm seeing as it's happening to him it's happening to three people three people who attend rema chapel three people in the name of the lord jesus it's a new season for you new season for you new season for you by the power of the holy spirit you don't have to bring them out just leave them where they are hallelujah we have five minutes to do this five minutes because there is the session where i prophesy please make sure we are going to try to finish fast but make sure you receive everything don't come and waste your time and stay now all those who came with sick people apart from those who have been healed if you brought somebody sick please bring them out quickly quickly let's lay hands on them give us some please quickly the Lord is healing people. There's the healing anointing in this place right now. God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. Please, quickly. No matter which of the overflows, brothers and sisters, there is multiplied grace in this house. Don't come and go back sick. You just need a touch. It's, it's just a touch. There's no need for any long story. So you don't necessarily have to be saying this. What is wrong with me if I don't ask you? Just a touch. Even if you are coming here for the first time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those of us who are out here. Jesus loves you. That's why he wants to heal you. Please. I want you to receive. You can reject it. But I want you to receive it with all your heart. As I pray for you, you go back, check yourself. Because of time, we may not have time to share testimony. But hold on, please. Let me say something about testimonies. Um, it is, you are robbing God of glory when God gives you healing and blessings. There are so many people who God has been touching, but they never return. To give thanks one of the ways you maintain your miracle is by giving thanks please come your breakthrough has come yes please madam come the lord is bringing a visitation to you right now don't put her up just keep her somewhere because the anointing is still on her and so that she doesn't keep collapsing up and down Look how many people are trusting God for healing. Ma, please look at me. God is restoring you financially, spiritually. Financially, there is an anointing on you as I speak to you. Financially, spiritually. I'm seeing God step even into your marriage. Our mother is crying. Your marriage. This is the reason why you came because there's nothing there god is stepping in to do a miracle for you to the glory of his name miracle for you who is this your mom what's wrong with her why didn't you bring her here yola yola hold the picture just hold it I will use you as a point of contact. Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through the picture to you and will touch her right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your healing power touch mama. 
She's in your lab or touch her, oh God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God is also bringing speed into your life. Speed, right now, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speed, I prophesy it upon you. Never to be the same again. And we pray for healing for mama. He will testify in the name of Jesus. The anointing is so strong on you. God is bringing restoration in your marriage. God is bringing restoration in your finances. God is bringing restoration in your spiritual life. I command everything the devil has stolen to give way. In the name of Jesus. There are so many people here who are going to be very fast. Just a touch. Please, I want you to believe. If you are standing in for somebody, you can agree with them. As you go back, you can touch them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe we'll be very fast in the name of Jesus. All over the congregation, I want you to begin to pray in tongues because immediately after this, we'll be prophesying. While you are praying in tongues, pass your prayer request. Both the one for souls and then your prayer request. Please pass it. So ushers, you can split yourself inside and outside. Someone attend to those in the overflows. Please, very good. Thank you, Jesus. Let your power touch your people right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A glorious God. A miracle right Hold on, let me attend to this gentleman. I promise that we'll look at him. Everybody look if you can look at it from your screens or wherever. You see that when you look at this guy, this is unusual. This is abnormal, right? How long has it been, my brother? Since last year. What happened to you? Uh, the, uh... I am, I'm just sick. I don't know what is happening to me. So I went to the hospital. They said I should go and do scanning. They said my spleen don't, don't big. What? My spleen don't big. So later on, what is that? Come now, doctor. You're already there. The spleen is an organ that reserves blood just below the ribs on the left side. So after that it's a cancer is disturbing me. Cancer. Cancer of what? So for now, I'm still there for this hospital for this uh, shika. So they never told me for cancer for what was still. Who told you about this place? It's my friend. May God bless that friend forever. In the name of Jesus. My brother, look at me. Do you believe Jesus can touch you? I, I believe Jesus. Love Jesus. I love Jesus. Born again. I'm a born again sir. You are serious with him? Yes, sir. Very, very serious. Very serious. I want you to know. Do you think he will just watch you just die like that? Do you believe it's his will for your stomach to be swelling? If you have a child and you have the power to help that child and you see the child's stomach swelling like that, will you smile and tell him continue and die? Is that love? So I want you to know that this thing, God has no hand in it. This is the devil. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. Lay your hands on your stomach. Don't let the name cancer scare you. You understand? It is because of what you have heard, the conditioning in your spirit that has made you feel that it's cancer. Uh, and made you feel it is destructive. There is the life of God. It's called the way. The very life of God. And I want to pray to you. You believe that? You want to kill that cancer and it must leave your body so that you will not die. I believe that like every other person, you have your plans and aspirations. And this is already threatening you to cut short your life. Huh? Are you married? Where's your wife? Because I'm seeing your wife crying. Your wife is already thinking now. And saying that this is how my husband will die. And I'll have to start looking for another man to marry me. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Father, do a miracle for this brother. We know that cancer is a spirit. In the name of Jesus. Cancer. Die. In the name of Jesus. The condition for your disappearance in this body will bring them to place. And I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus that this cancer will die and it will leave your body forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will return and you will testify. Make sure you testify when God gives you a breakthrough. What's your name? Sarah. Osea. So make sure you testify in the name of Jesus Christ.
I worship forever. I worship forever. I worship forever, Lord. I worship forever. I worship forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're getting into the most important. Please, those outside, can we rise? This is a very prophetic moment. Hallelujah. This is a very, very serious moment. The requests here contain the names of loved ones. I want you to know that everyone is an evangelist this year. There is, there is need for massive salvation. The Lord spoke to me and said he's trusting that he will find the people who will bring souls this year like never before. And I told him, I said, Lord, I'm available. So make sure that from now till December, you don't come alone. We, we are on a mission. Not just to ease ourselves of the guilt of not being soul winners. It's serious business. Hallelujah. Please, those who are yet to submit the names of their loved ones that you are trusting God for them to be saved and then our requests. Very quickly, we have a few minutes. Now, we're going to do it in this order. The moment, let me make an altar call before we pray for this so we can conserve our time. There are people here. Hear me. First overflow, second overflow across the road. Listen. Listen. There are people here, probably you were invited and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he so loved you. And he demonstrated that love by giving his all, his one and only begotten son. Please, by the way, I don't want you to miss the series we are starting next week. We are taking a series on the gospel. We are going to be examining who Jesus is and the message that he brought. What is the content in the gospel that really saves men so this is profound we preachers have been distracted teaching people on restoration and demons we need to get back and let people understand who jesus is what message did he bring and why is it very powerful where are we really going with all this christianity thing so it's a powerful series you don't want to miss it will be having that all through february praise the lord it will rattle the foundation of your understanding about God and will be walking in exchange. Hallelujah. For instance, let me give you a little preview. Um, the message of Jesus, when he came, his message was just one word, repent. That's all Jesus said, repent. So we're going to be checking what does it mean to repent? Does it mean to come and emotionally answer a, a, a poem? to repeat after the man of God what, what is the what is the jurisdiction of that word repent hallelujah so this is very very important I'm going to make an altar call now and while the people march forward please clear the way for them we'll stretch our hands and be interceding first for souls leave the issue of your needs we're going to intercede you wrote their names you know call them by their names and say Lord we receive their salvation if you save me you can save them you don't want to watch your family members in hell and they are calling on you and saying you know me we came out from the same womb but some of them we know that they are going to hell there's no confusion about it god is a god of love we'll be learning next week but then the truth is there is hell don't let anybody deceive you there is a place called hell there are people there right now praise the lord you are here you need to make your ways right with god you've been hearing preachers talk again and again outside inside you probably are making this decision for the first time seriously in your life. Or you've been answering many altar calls. You don't even know how many. And you don't know the name of what you have been doing. And tonight you are saying, I really want to come out and make a decision. Or you have even given your life to Christ. You are a pastor. You are, you know, functioning in the body of Christ. But you know that you need a, a rededication of your life. Things happen around your life, discouragements, God didn't answer your prayer and he made you to derail out of the way of the Lord. Those two categories of people, I'm going to count one to five, please for time's sake. 
for time's sake wherever you are leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain especially for those outside one quickly god bless you god bless you don't don't fight it win that war tonight there are so many people coming from outside no matter how far don't say it's too far make your way to jesus god bless you one two keep coming please don't stop don't let your friend don't let anyone stop you this is a destiny decision you have seen the power of god you have seen the grace of god you know that he loves you that he allowed you come for koinonia tonight it's a sign that he loves you and he has great plans for you make your way to the front very quickly while they come keep coming please stretch your hands towards this request and begin to pray in tongues please everybody pray in tongues first for the salvation forget about your prayer request please keep coming you know you need to be out here no matter how long it will take please make your way to the front no matter what you have done jesus loves you and he can give you a new beginning so make your way to the front stretch your hands and let's pray on this request all of you that are inside just stretch your hands as a point of contact those outside stretch your hands towards the screen and let's pray Lord, we pray for every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul, every soul in this place. Lord, save them. Some of them are not even Christians. Save them to the uttermost, young and old. We receive their salvation. Give them dreams, give them encounters. You died for them, they must not go to hell. You have great plans for them. They need to experience the love of Jesus. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. We intercede for their souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, save our fathers, save our mothers, save our brothers, our classmates, our colleagues in the office. In the name of Jesus, our families, no matter how far they are from the cross, bring them to meetings, give them encounters. Holy Spirit, we permit your ministry in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now begin to pray over your request. Lay your hands over your request by faith and say, Lord, I turn it into a testimony. Go ahead and pray. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. I turn it into a testimony. Father, give your people testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, we bring this before your altar. Give your people manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. Manifold testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Manifold testimonies. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we pray for every soul represented here. We release angels of salvation wherever they are in the name that is above all names. We authorize these angels to hunt for their souls. They will know no peace till they find the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release dreams 
we release visions of Jesus we release encounters with the world in the name of Jesus everywhere they turn to they will hear the gospel they will hear it in church they will hear it in class they will hear it everywhere for those who have vowed that they will not give their life to Christ Lord in the name of Jesus we we place their stubbornness side by side with the blood of Jesus and we declare that their souls must be saved and not only saved they will be saved added to the church and established in righteousness in the name of Jesus Lord we pray for these requests Lord right here are humanly speaking impossible situations but Lord as I walk upon them they become testimonies as I walk upon them they become testimonies and Lord your people will stand to testify in the presence of everyone healings and miracles and breakthroughs and salvations and restorations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now those of you who are making this decision for Jesus Christ I love you from the depth of my heart and I thank you for coming out to accept Jesus Christ it's a very noble decision hallelujah there's no need to feel as if you are going to hellfire it's an exciting thing because it looks natural but it is supernatural in every way lift your right hand and say this after me I'm just guiding you but it's, it's, it's the truth from your heart that really sets you free say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart some of you as you are praying you will literally feel things leaving you as you are praying Jesus said I am the way the truth and I am the life say after me again Lord Jesus I believe in you and I love you with all my heart I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask you tonight save me cleanse me in the name of Jesus everything in me that is not from you I command to leave me right now I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit I'm a child of God my goodness I sense such heavy anointing of the Holy Spirit even just right here in the altar right here I'm sensing that there is such a strong anointing ministering to people ministering to people something is entering you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ those who are getting born again as you are getting born again some of you are getting filled with the Holy Ghost instantly instantly because I see the power of God coming on some of you in the name of Jesus say after me from today I'm a child of God the life of God is in me I will never be the same in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit may you become mighty men and women of the Spirit in the name of Jesus may God do great and mighty things in and through your life I really pray for you from the depth of my heart may you never go back to the systems of this world again may the Holy Spirit guide you may he instruct you and teach you in the name of Jesus Christ may you be established in righteousness in Jesus name I pray may God bless you I like you to follow the lady waving her hands she will have your details and I promise that we'll send you a text and we'll follow you up may God bless you in Jesus name follow the lady very quickly hallelujah God bless you please everyone stand everyone stand I want to speak over your life now and please I want you to pay attention those outside this is when everybody gets to receive something mighty upon their lives I believe in the power of prophecy I believe in its ability to change the course of your life please let's prepare the announcement quickly so that we can take it afterwards we have seen in this house what God has done with prophecy when Pastor Alpha came up here he was admonishing us and he told us he said you don't just believe in the Lord but you believe in the prophets that he has put. this is not human worship it's an election of grace God sends men and anoints them with apostolic and, and prophetic mantles and graces 
because he wants to use the words through them to step into your life and destiny there will be radical change as I, pre I prophesy over your life lift your hands Jesus. inside and outside lift your hands the power of God is strong I already feel like fire on my hands I speak over your life a dimension of speed you have never seen a dimension of speed you have never seen receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive it right now in the name of Jesus inside and outside let a mantle come on you for supernatural speed in the name of Jesus I pray for you every spiritual blindness everything covering your eyes from accessing insight in the Word of God you need insight your life is at the mercy of the spiritual insight you have I'm praying for you like a veil torn from a man's eyes I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I command that veil to be torn right now I speak against the spirit of limitation that force from hell it allows you to move forward but it will say you will not cross this border in the name that is above all names I come under this anointing this night and I command whatever limit you have seen in your life I break it tonight I break that limit tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every strange dream every spiritual encounter of the night that is not orchestrated from heaven every visitation of demons they appear as animals they appear as men as women they appear as all kinds of things seeing yourself in primary school wearing all kinds of things I don't care what it is in the name that is above all names I command judgment upon those spirits now I command judgment upon those spirits now every voice that calls you forth in your sleep and programs tragedy over your destiny the Bible was not it didn't leave us in darkness as to what happens when men sleep I pray whatever calls you forth in your sleep and reprograms your destiny so that you wake up into tragedies by the blood of Jesus I attack those enchanters I challenge their enchantment in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you prosperity like you have never seen a dimension of wealth like you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus I pray upon you the same way favor can come on a man like a mantle you can carry it you can know you are carrying help that guy please see this will come on people seriously this ministry has enjoyed a level of inexplainable favor I'm praying for you from that which has come upon this ministry let it come upon your life right now I release that favor in the name of Jesus receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive that favor receive that favor hallelujah I pray for you and Jabez was more honorable listen honor is not just age honor is a mantle God can is a distinguishing anointing that sets you apart and men not only recognize your difference but they celebrate it I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ from today an unction comes upon you a strange grace that makes men to celebrate who you are and what you carry 
believe me when I say this I pray for you inside and outside from the depth of my spirit that mantle of honor that distinguishing anointing receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for your families every project that has refused to be completed I don't care what it is the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it I'm praying for you whatever has experienced stagnancy in your family I supply spirit power and I command it to start moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ every uncompleted project hear the word of the Lord tonight I command you to be completed in the name of Jesus I've said it again and again that the next level of your life is a destiny help I way listen listen I have seen in my life and I have enjoyed the strange ministry of destiny helpers brothers and sisters God does not need 20 people to change your life one correct person can just step into your life there was a man who some friends insisted he must be healed they carried him and tossed somebody's zinc and brought him to those are not friends they are destiny helpers my God in the name of Jesus I don't know where they are who must appear in your life between now and February but in the name that is above all names I speak to the north I speak to the south I speak to the east I speak to the west destiny help us come forth now come forth now financial help us come forth now marital help us come forth now academic help us come forth now career help us come forth now if there are no human beings to occupy that position angels must appear in human bodies and perform that role I pray for you the Lord told us this year is a year of multiplied grace and influence I want you to go back and meditate on it you already see what is happening in the house the house has entered another dimension and everybody who cares has entered that dimension I pray for you I don't know what level of grace you have been functioning in but I pray listen to what I'm about to tell you in the name of Jesus whatever dimension of grace you have seen right now I stand under this apostolic anointing I multiply that grace upon your life I multiply that grace I multiply that healing power I multiply that deliverance power I multiply that grace for favor I multiply that teaching anointing I multiply your influence where you could not have gone by now I pray by the wings of the spirit may you be carried to strange dimensions of influence where your business has not gotten to where your certificate could not have entered in the name of Jesus I expand your spiritual borders and I compel influence in your life in the name of Jesus Christ when you open your mouth to call for help I force your words to enter the ears of an helper in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again koinonia that if you dare open your mouth to cry for help I declare may that word not die till it enters the ears of your helper I speak to the elements of creation I compel them to come in alignment with your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I use the earth as a point of contact every human being works on the earth I speak that anywhere the earth sees you let it compel favor for you some of you may not understand what I'm doing just believe me 
Job said, for out of the earth comes bread. I command. The bread that is buried for your destiny in the earth, I call it out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know the desires of your heart, but I'm praying that between now and the next miracle service, that you will come and stand before the people of God and testify to the might of God. Everything that has brought tears out of your family, I judge it right now. Every career person, listen to me. We are forcing promotion this year. Don't say it cannot happen. You will fool yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look, in the name that is above all names, the mystery of lifting, may it come upon your life. Every student here, your CGPA has ears and I want to speak to it. In the name, you had the testimony of that gentleman. He didn't even complete the testimony. He sent me the text. He was praying for 0.11. And that's exactly what he got 0.11 and it brought him to 3.50 i pray for you in the name of jesus especially for those who are just starting 100 level you will start with a mysterious gpa that will shock people i pray for those who have tried and tried but your academics is just hooking you you have done all you know to do i bail you out of it this night in the name of jesus christ i bail you out of it this night in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you i must pray for your spiritual life encounters that you have never had listen you need encounters in your life you need encounters you hear people like Bishop Oyedeko mention encounters and what he transmitted in them. I pray strange encounters with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God that will launch your destiny to another dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing dies in your hands. I say it again, nothing dies in your hands. Those who came from far I prophesy to you you left all and paid the price to come carry an unction that will shock all that know you in the name of Jesus Christ you will go back to your campuses you will go back to your job you will go back to your homes with a mysterious anointing that will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ I bless you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that the miracles begin in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Give Jesus a clap of praise. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.